That's a hot take. Swing it around, American flag, because yeah. that's what America's supposed to be. It's supposed to look like terminally chill. The yeah. insurance commercial has a fat ass, but like no personality. Yeah, I feel like sitting here and listening to this. <laughs> no, god damn it. Isaac, New Noise is not the first fucking refused album. Rip Isaac a new one today. Do you know what I mean? Like. Don't touch my records. Ever. What's up, everybody, and welcome to Hot Takes. I am Young Shiro, and with me to my left is the Honorable Dr. Ooh, Skeleton uh, Lipstick. Um, hello. For tonight's broadcast, we have invited a very special uh, old head from the vaporwave scene, uh, making slush wave, making all kinds of crazy flips and mashups. Uh, many Vocal of you remember, songs, too, con- all kinds of constructions. Very I multifaceted. Mean, I think, no. Since you remember, it's not at all, in my opinion. Vincent Remember collaborated, probably most well known, collaborated with Telepath. Um, yeah. Interstellar Love, but uh, obviously has a lot of solid, solid material on his own. Uh, released on both Business Casual and Dream Catalog, so you know he's a heavy hitter. We're excited to have Vincent with us tonight. But as always, most importantly, thank you, Hot Takes homies, for tuning in. Um, let us know if our levels are good, if it's too loud, too quiet. If the music is too loud or too quiet, keep us in the loop. Uh, if you have questions, run those questions. We want to keep this chat active. Uh, don't forget, nothing's off the table, just no punching down. Punching up is fine, just keep it kind. Um, let me fix your video feed, and Chris is going to start us off oh. tonight with a handful of recommendations. You're sure, fine. Sure, why not? Actually, that's great. Right. Thank you. All right. Uh, okay. You know, one uh, album that I kind of want to draw some attention to that came out, I believe, last year is by an artist known as uh, Agnar, and it's the album 4, colon, 3. It's a fantastically produced, very spacious album full of really skittering, but calm, but at the same time calm synth lines and very confident drum patterns in the background. But it's it's got a lot of um, sort of like the actual texture of the fuzz within the synth is what skitters a lot, but the synths themselves are actually quite stable and really maintain this sort of landscape of walking down along, I don't even know, like a space corridor or something like that nature. And then the drums kind of rattle along in the background and it's a whole experience. And I really do feel like this is an artist who should get a little bit more attention and Agnar. I mean, they've been, yeah, Agnar, they've been working for quite a while now and slowly sort of building their sound and developing the t- their production techniques. And it's a real joy to check out the album 4 colon 3 by Agnar, um, young producer as well. And they've oh, yeah. already made a lot of progress and, and had a lot of success. Uh, and I very much look forward to what this producer is going to do in the future. And then if I could maybe go recommend one other guy right now who has um, a new, uh, I think, uh, a new EP out, I believe. And that would be, uh, well, I guess, yeah, it's an EP. It's like three songs. Uh, Superflat's Aero Disco. Superflat. Uh, it- uh, Superflats, uh, all, I mean, already like one, you know, it's, I mean, I mentioned I know many you're times a here. I've, wor- I've worked, I've worked with him before. True. Um, he's a guy who's constantly bringing in new sounds to his production techniques. Um, whether it's going to be sort of like an acid house feel or a few, fu- well, you know, combined with the future funk feel and also combined with his, uh, experience as a, uh, as a, as a DJ for multiple parties over in, I believe, Mexico City. You know, he's just got a lot of influences that go into his music. He knows how to throw a party. It's evident in his Hell music. Yeah. He knows how to make party music. He's a guy who's clearly uh, DJed multiple different types of parties. And also, he's got that Latin influence in him. And I love me some some future funk producers from Latin America because they just view the That's genre from a is whole... From. Correct. I have Brazil. Yeah, there's a lot. Uh, Jesse cassettes as well, and mm-hmm. um, all River kinds wave. of. There's a whole. Yeah, man, absolutely. So there's like I really love the Latin American 
future funk producers because they they're like approaching this like genre from so many different cultural influences and that is just so much fun you know what's always funny to me too is like when i talk to them it's just fascinating to me how they still have they have the same a lot of the same musical influences that we would have in america like they'll talk to you about the right. avalanches all day long mm -hmm. they'll talk to you about uh, all the other uh influences that go into vaporwave but they also have their influences from their own local music scenes too so it really just like i mean you're like combining these like imagine just combining you know you know the the french house along with the city pop and then along with latin influence that's too cool and then and then whatever else super flat's interested in which you know currently would be like a lot of like acid techno stuff right so you know check out his new ep as well and thanks for uh, the links by uh, the way lux Yo, thank you so much. Yeah, so Aero Disco by Superflat and 4 colon 3 by Agnar. And, uh, okay, yeah, go ahead. Very What's cool. your hot take? Uh, quick uh, quick shout-out also. Uh, Soft Replica's album just dropped. Everybody congratulate Dang. Soft Replica. Yeah, absolutely. Let's put that out as another recommendation by me, too, is that Soft Replica's new album as well. And um, I know, but you can talk about that. If it's you not like. my turn, but Soft Replica, as you guys know, is go for it. Why a not? long-time friend it. of the show. Uh, not to steal the spotlight Great from Soft album. Replica, along with a few no, other people. Please steal always, it for Soft Replica. Please Always do. been here. Soft Replica took a beautiful fusion of shoegaze uh, and slush wave and video game, mostly JRPG soundtrack samples, and just put out his debut album, Finally, which I had the, you know, the homie hookup and I heard a little while back. But uh, mastered by another friend of the show, the illustrious Angel Mark Lloyd. That's and right. Boy, Why did she make it this? pop really made it pop it's lush it's spacey it's sentimental it's hypnagogic and it's highly recommended to anyone who likes sweet trip candy claws sea feel uh vincent remember telepath whatever um you got to check mm -hmm. it out thank you lux again for linking soft replicas I album is that called as well absolutely only ever in dreams wonderful mm -hmm. work check it out see if you can count the samples it's it's impossible um <laughs> Thank you, Chris. My uh, my hot take for tonight uh, again involves DJing, and it's something oh, that I really want to bounce off of you because you are the more seasoned party DJ between the two of us. It's okay. more of a lamentation, I guess, a rumination <laughs> for any fellow DJs in chat. I know Mark uh, Vincent remember DJs too. Um, I've actually, yeah, he's yeah, DJ yeah, he with DJs too. Actually. He's been in a show yeah, like, yeah, I, I have very I have fond memories of tuning into a stream and him playing some fire ass alexander o'neill tracks but we'll talk about that later um it was it was an irl show by virtual oh that's actually. really cool okay <laughs> so jealous it 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 seems to me that there are two types of djs and two types of shows there are shows where upon you play the hits you play what people want to hear and there are shows yep. in which you show the audience something they've never heard before yep. and i really Hot take, I really hate how most people don't like the former as much as the latter because... Wait, say that again. They don't like what's the former again? It seems to me, Chris, and, and I'm not going to cast aspersions as you call it because we all love a good karaoke uh -huh. session. If you don't play uh -huh. the hits, the floor will go empty. And so I you just, say people don't like the former? Isn't that so? I, do you say people don't feel, don't like that? You know what? I meant to say the opposite. People, people, oh, I feel yeah. like, yeah. and I mean, I'm guilty. Whenever I, let's say I want to go see a band play live. I know that like, you know, to bring them up again, Animal Collective is famous for experimenting the entire night. And people who want to hear like My Girls and shit will typically leave kind of let down. I, I, I understand that people want to hear, you know, the pop culture like hits that they can like scream and sing along to in an anthemic fashion, but it bothers me that like anytime you want to slide something in there that's unfamiliar or unheard, I feel like a lot of people, at least outside of our scene, just don't really respond. It's like people yeah, don't want to hear anything new. You got to slide it in in between a bunch of known hits and that just don't sit right what? with me. Okay, that's fair. Uh, it depends on what the the context of the party is, right? It does indeed. So, if you're being hired as Skeleton Lipstick, the artist, you can play what you want. But if you're DJing correct. a party, you have to play the favorites. You have to do what the crowd tells you to do. And so you start off with favorite because it's easy because you know it'll work. And then you move it. You know, I don't have to tell you this. You know better than anybody probably is that you start off with something that people like or you start off with something that even if they don't know, you know will work really well on the dance True. floor. 
and then you move out from there. If you can sneak in something that's very interesting, that's great. If you can't, you can't. It just depends on the day, in my opinion. I, I, you know, it depends. It's just, it's all going to be guided by whatever the crowd wants to do. And maybe you do pick something that they don't respond to, and then you just got to get out of that song and get into another one, right? Um, you know, and, and it just depends on the context of what the thing is. You know, the, the fact of the matter is that these days, the line between performance and DJing is extremely blurred now, right? You know, because that's just currently how we've decided to present electronic musical artists is we will put them behind the DJ decks because, well, you know, that's just the, uh, that's what we do now. <laughs> you know what yeah, I mean? That's how we do it now. That's how, yeah, but a, but a lot more often we've moved away a lot from that and put them behind DJ decks, particularly if they're more high energy artists, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, and it's, sometimes wrong. these people aren't necessarily DJs, they're producers, but this is like, what else are you going to put them behind sure. right? for them to demonstrate what their music is like, what their energy is like, what their uh, performance is like? Obviously, at Terminally Chill, I consider that to be a dance party, specifically a dance party, as in like this is a party and the format is vaporwave music and the vaporwave scene in general. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we're going to play stuff that is from the scene or has influenced the scene or people in the scene enjoy, right? True. So. But if it was like a Virtua 94 show, like they set up a lot of shows and, um, you know, maybe you're an electronic artist that mostly DJs or maybe, you know, I did do a distinction between like party DJing and performative yeah. DJing. Performative DJing, the focus is on the performer and what they're doing and how they're going to do it and their energy. Everyone looks at them and dance like party that. DJing is about the audience and what and it's about the audience. Right. And um, and, and, th and their interactions and building that little community and having people come back every month or every two months, depending on when you do the party, right? Mm -hmm. A show only happens once in a while. Performative DJing only happens once in a while when someone does it. Fair. And a party is usually a regularly scheduled event that, you know, people come to, you know, for a good time. You know what I mean? And yeah. specifically, it's about the audience at those parties. Yeah, you got to make them want to come back. And, and I mean, that, I, I make feel that like that's that's clear to And I make that pretty clear to anybody who, who plays at Terminally Chill. You know what I mean? That this is like, you are, you are not here to to show off all your music and to do this and that you can a little bit but mostly you're right. here to like show off your ability to guide a crowd you Get know show dancing. off your ability yeah your ability to generate energy for a dance party to generate energy and, and bind people together in a community setting so you know whole other skill set whole other thing whole other skill and you're set. right very right, honorable. Though, but I and, I and I agree with your hot take absolutely and I think that's why you need to make it clear to people what they're getting into when they mm -hmm. go to something you know what I mean? Well said. I, you know, if they're gonna... All right. Well, do you want to introduce our guest tonight? <laughs> yeah, sure. Let's bring in. Um, you know, no, no, you, you do it, you do it. Okay, you did, well, you, you did it such a good I, job before. I forgot to ask him if we can address him by name, so I'll ask him in a minute. But uh, Vincent, remember, him, guys, man. is uh, of course oh, an OG, and uh, we we are very very excited mm -hmm. to have him on. Um, give him a warm hot takes welcome, welcome, and go ahead and unmute yourself, buddy. <laughs> What's up? Yeah. What's going What's on? What's up, man? How, How are you doing? doing We're glad I'm to have you. I'm doing very well. Very uh, happy to have you here. Thank you. Can, thank can you we address you by me. your first name? Yeah, or do you yeah, want? Okay. <laughs> you can say no. It's all right. Uh, guys, everybody say hello to Mark. Uh, <laughs> um, Yo. Thank you very, very much for joining us tonight. Uh, chat, go ahead and start running up some questions for Mark. Uh, Vincent, remember, I'm going to kick us off with a fun one, if that's okay, before uh, Skelly Please gets in with the uh, autobiographical I wanna, one. I want to know. I want to know where <laughs> he, a man starts from. I want to know well, what the first. I want to know what the weirdest music that you enjoy is. The weirdest music I enjoy. Yes. Uh, I don't know. I I, <laughs> I kind of <laughs> like took a whole left turn from like weird shit when i was younger i was like super into like super weird shit <laughs> right like same uh, I feel like i've mellowed out yeah yeah I, it, i'm pretty he, he much just... <laughs> funk you know uh soul and funk now for some reason i don't know it makes Hell me yeah. feel good <laughs> no, tell me that's, about it that's dude. nothing you gotta you gotta follow what makes you feel good absolutely yeah. I've noticed as I've yeah, aged, you... the music that makes me feel good is what sticks with me as well. I mean, I you like know, art I music. Change. Well, you know, it doesn't even have to be the weirdest thing ever. It can just be something that, you know, just didn't even maybe seem like you initially and something that you're into that people wouldn't guess, maybe. True. Um, 
Yeah. I I don't know, man. I'm like a super shoegaze guy, man. No, like, that's badass. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe you can yeah. help us settle a debate. Are you a bigger fan of My Bloody Valentine or Slow Dive? Slow Dive, man. <laughs> Thank you. I feel so validated yeah. right now. Wow. Big Everybody oh, yeah. it's, it's... wants to shit down my throat whenever I say Slow Dive. Really? Yeah. I'm surprised at that. I am so happy right now. I'm surprised they get so upset about that. <laughs> I think that would See, look, like Soft Replica video. says bye. <laughs> wow. I, I love I love My Bloody Valentine. I love them, of course, too. Slow yeah, slow dive is like yo, they paved the way, but it's something about that Slovaki that's just like, I can right. do, I can listen to Slovaki doing anything, and I True. mean anything, you know. <laughs> Th it. I feel so validated uh, right now, Mark. Thank you. Yeah, I, I, Indeed. I <laughs> All right. Wait. Okay. Can I ask? Are we got left? Uh, let me let me run one of Shoji's questions really quick, if that's okay, right. Chris. Shoji says, "What was the first? Go ahead. What was the first live show you've ever done, and how did you feel?" The first live show I've ever done, um, when I was in in high school with with my homies, we did like a uh, uh, like a talent show. It was okay. fucking terrible. They they booed us off. The <laughs> no, <Really? laughs> no, that did not happen. At a talent show? It yeah, a, and I, I, I was goes. A, we went to a very unforgiving <laughs> high school. My yeah, friend. damn. Yeah, wow. it was. We, we were a small high school, so like, imagine right. like it was, it's only like 200, 300 people in high school. So imagine like having to see the same people that booed you. Boy, I bet you remembered all of them. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I hope you don't run into them at the what, grocery store. Wait, wait, were you doing an original song or were you? Wait, yeah, I, turn up, I gotta turn up my mic. Apparently. Yeah, turn up your mic. You, you turned me down. You. Well, um, I mean, I'm up. Okay, you perfect. lowered me, right? I I I put you back to the normal volume, but now we're good. Thank you. Okay. Doc. Thank yeah. you, good doctor. Uh, wait, so what kind of band was it? Were you playing an original song or was it a cover? No, nah, it was like, you know, I, I wanted to be a rapper at one point. So me and nice. my, my rapper homie. I feel homies, like you wanted to be everything. Just yeah. judging by your, like, just judging from your discography. You know, like, yeah. you've been like everything. Go ahead, continue. But no, I, I, I made the beat. The beat was terrible. I kind of was like <laughs> the little John, like hyping up the crowd. It's like, yeah, everybody get up on your feet. Oh, and then damn. they started rapping. <laughs> They're, they're, Amazing. <laughs> they're, they're in the mic great. like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, buddy, my, class, <laughs> my classmate was uh, like, boo, no. boo. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> this is That's crazy. so ugly, dude. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Yeah, so, how did that make that. you I'm, feel? I'm very That's glad you can laugh about it now. The question. I think the answer is obvious. Made, <laughs> I, I felt like I did a good job because I got the crowd on their feet. They were excited. Nice. That, like, you know, I'm hyping up the crowd, but I felt a little bad for my friends because. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm like, no. You did your job. Yeah, I did my job. Yeah, man. A hype man has to go all in. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I did my job. They they should have rapped better, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they should have given you a good <laughs> reason to hype fault. them up. I, I really love the fact that you're like, I can look back on this and be like, I did right. I did a good job. You know what? This isn't on me at the end of the day. Right. All right. Wait. All right. Okay. Go. Can go, I Chris. Do, can, yes. can I do a question now, please? Yes. All right. Cool. Okay. Because I have to know, you know, you are somebody who has been involved in the music scene for a very long time. I would say that you're one of the first wave guys, in my opinion. And how did you get involved with, I mean, we'll, we'll first start with this question, but then I have other ones before that will come after. But the first thing I have to ask is just, um, I mean, how did you get involved in this music scene? How did you get involved with, uh, with making music uh, in this little playground of, uh, uh, that we have here? How did, you, how did that happen? One day I was like surfing, um, excuse me, SoundCloud, and I came across this dude named Massimo McKelly. Or I, I don't know if I'm pronouncing his name correctly. He's a, a, a Russian vaporwave producer, but okay. he uh, he he did a, a you know a, he slowed down um, Delma Houston's "You Used to Hold Me," and I was mm. like, "Oh, this shit is crazy!" Because I, I didn't I never heard that track before. So once I heard that, I'm like, "Yo, what is this wow. new thing that's going on?" Because I I've never heard it. That's when I started to find Telepath and Hell yeah. and uh. And Silver Richard, that, that Silver that's Richard's the first project. Nice. Yeah. Wow. Apparently, and, and, and Lux you, is a fan. Yeah, of the if, if you notice. Guy. Yeah, and and he was he 
yeah, look right there, yeah. And, yeah. and I, I appreciate his, his, what he was doing, but I mean, with the Silver Richard thing, you can kind of see the similarity between mm. Vince Remember and Silver Richards, you know? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> so not that I've like fashioned the, the, the brand behind that, but you know, I, I was inspired by that, you know? So Absolutely. Kinda, just that time period right there, that, that definitely inspired me, you know, to uh, to get into the scene, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then you started making, you know, your music and did you, you, you got pretty involved in it. You know, you've collaborated with a lot of interesting people. How did you meet Telepath? Uh, so I don't, yeah, I, let's, let's refer to him as Telepath. I was going to, you know, say Luke. I don't know if y'all know. Nah, I don't, yeah. I, I do. I, mean, I actually, I've actually, actually no, point. it's true. No, I've actually smoked, I've actually smoked weed with, with uh, him before. So <laughs> yeah, I, I do nice. know him. <laughs> I, yeah, I never his own personal selection, actually. Yeah, I've, I've never met him in in real life. I know that when the uh, the festival happened up there in, in New York, he was mm-hmm. asking about me. And, and shout out to shout out to Telepath, you know. Mm-hmm. I haven't talked to him in yeah. a few years, but yeah, uh, we were just exchanging comments on SoundCloud, like, "Yo, oh, this is not." You know how he would like, you know, do his his uh his comments and he would space his letters across and like yeah you know uh-huh. uh, otherworldly <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah the majestic magical quality yeah, absolutely oh so you basically um i mean i think that's like how a lot of us would always become friends with each other is you know just noticing somebody uh, making the comments about things and um networking it's very interesting back then it was just so much networking um you know between different artists and between different people and it's funny how that all gels together to become a community eventually it's yeah. it's fascinating really yeah shout out indeed, to the early indeed. days of vapor when you could uh, mm-hmm. when you could get George Clinton to answer you in uh, in his DMs, I still have like a Mirror Kisses remix that I forgot. I was supposed to like release a long time ago. Oh and no, I, way. I can't do that. Yeah, I'm not gonna do yeah, that now. A little late now, right? <laughs> no, uh, we got a small backlog. Of I never questions. finished it. Um, oh, all right, fine. Yeah. We get some questions. I have you know, more actually, questions, you had. We'll, we'll do, get, oh, I'm sure you no, do. No, go do the back. Well, so uh, Lux, you kind of already you kind of already answered her question. She said, "What was the Vaporwave album that introduced you to the genre?" What led you to Vaporwave? Um, yeah, I, if you I, want to expound on that, I, you can. But she has a follow-up question. It's pretty good. She wants to know what your favorite Vaporwave album ever is. A favorite Vaporwave album ever? Um, hmm. I don't know. I'm, I'm definitely gonna name drop Telepath a lot tonight. <laughs> Go for it, man. Uh, damn, I forgot the. I, I know the Silver Richard Telepath split was one of my favorites, but. It was the uh, I forgot the name of the one telepath slowed down this gospel sample, uh, and he mm. called it Sex and Bernio, and <laughs> that that <laughs> wow. that project was like my favorite of all time because that sent me down like this this gospel funk like rabbit hole nice. because he mm. sampled that like th- that was a random sample but I'm like yo this shit is so cool like where did he find this from you know dude I was um, looking into a, a sample for a specific N five X this track called. Cause I know they want to catch me. This fool took a song, a Christian song called "Jesus Is My Lord." It's like a Jesus Freak era, but like a funky yeah. Jesus Freak song, and, and did the slow down and looping thing, and then threw like a rap beat over it, and like a rap like bar. And I was just like, "Man, this is good." <laughs> I don't know how people find yeah, that that's, shit. Well, that's like the fascinating thing about all this stuff. It's just like, and it's like uh, you know, it's like Mark was just saying, like. You know, you hear that song and it just sends you down a rabbit hole into like a whole other genre of music or a whole other enclave of sounds that you never even considered thinking about before. And then all of a sudden, here you are in this new world of music. You know what I mean? That was just like there was like a little signpost. That Vaporwave song was the signpost pointing towards it. And you just like you enter this other world. And it's so fascinating how many interesting things you can find through this uh, through this little uh Little experimentations, you know what I mean? True. Indeed. Fascinating stuff. Um, do you have another? Is there another question in the backlog right now? Um, I want to say I think Shoji asked what your favorite project that you worked on was. That's a good question. I think it was Shoji. Yeah. What's your favorite project you've worked on? I think Culture Vulture probably was my favorite project I worked yeah. on. That's a great album. That is a great uh, album. Super, super different. That's a great from album. A typical sound. That's yeah. really interesting. The voc I mean, you know, you do vocals. Yeah. yeah <laughs> that that's yeah. Phen- phenomenal. What dis- what made you decide 
you know what? Let's try something else. Let me let me really put myself out there. Let me start adding some vocals. Let me, let me just try it out. Add some vocals to a to a to a you know for an album. What made you decide to go in that direction? You know, my best friend, my partner in Camp Candle was always like, "Yo, you should like start singing and stuff. You like you should start doing something at the showcase that you can actually like hold a note." And I'm like, mm-hmm. you know what? I I do kind of like my voice, so I I might do a couple tracks like that. I, like I, that. I definitely would like to to do like a full project like that with with songs that i write and, yeah. and actually you know lee because like the the whole you know george clanton thing always like inspired me as well and mm-hmm. and i appreciate him and and his wife like they they definitely took that and it there's it's a whole other thing now you know and i, and I appreciate what they're doing with that mm-hmm. it is very much yeah. vaporwave 2.0 yeah yeah so do you want to tell us a little bit more about camp candle because I've, I've followed it kind of loosely, but uh, I'm not sure the viewers are aware of what you're working on right now. Uh, well, Camp Candle is a project, that, you know, it's like an indie pop, indie R&B project that me and my high school best friend put together. And, you know, just once again, talking about like all the influences that we had growing up and kind of just, cool. you know, having a melting pot in, into one thing and just growing you know, uh, mentally and spiritually through that and, and just understanding this, you know, music industry and, and whatever else. And, and we've had such good moments up until the COVID shit happened, you know, Real shit. Uh, it, it, and, and, and it's all good. You know, we're, we're still, we're still doing our thing with that. It's, you know, we're kind of on not hiatus, but you know, it's, it's mm. been a slow two years because of COVID, you know, but shout out to my, my partner, Hatepsa, you know, we we definitely gonna get back to that, but I definitely out. uh check out check out Camp Candle when y'all get a chance. And thanks thanks Lux in the uh in the chat there. Lux for is honestly amazing. Yeah, oh, yeah, rapid fire with those well, links. You know, and that is the fun thing about this uh little music scene in general is how you can say things like, you know what, I'm gonna get together with my friends and we're gonna draw on all of our musical influences to create something interesting and different. And this is the sort of audience in this little scene that gets it, you know what I mean? That likes that sort of thing, that enjoys the idea that, you know, you're going to demonstrate your style, you're going to demonstrate your influences, you're going to put them all together to create something unique, you know what I mean? It's not going to be always the same thing over and over again. You know, it's 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 going to it's gonna have Shows a... Growth. Um, you know, it, 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 yeah, they appreciate growth, and they appreciate, I think, that the big thing that they appreciate is people taking the things that made them and all the different sounds that made them and putting them together into their own work. You know what I mean? I think that's the one thing about the artists in the scene is it's influenced by a multitude of different sounds and they're fascinated by sounds. You know what I mean? Like right. you, know, you talked about how you went down that whole gospel funk rabbit hole from that one song. And like, you know, that's the thing about the producers in the scene is that we will find something and just continue to like look look into it and get deeper yeah. into it, and then to understand it. I think that there's like a very strong, um, you know, uh, a very strong sort of motivation for producers in the scene to understand music. You know what I mean? Yeah. From like yeah. absolutely, you know, just of the feel of it. That is to say, to get it, and then to like come back after they learn about it and to have their have favorite artists from that little world. You know what I mean? Yeah. That they just discovered. But anyway, speaking of which, um, let's go back a little farther than that then. And what um, what made you decide to start making music in the first place? When did you decide you wanted to make music? And this was something that you felt you, you would like to do. Oh, way back in the days of early 2000s, my mom got us a, a, an iMac, one of those Hell translucent... Yeah. Yeah. The jabs. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it was some program. I don't remember the name of it. I think it was called Tactile or something like that. And and I think we were like able to like DJ on it or something like that. And oh, wow. my mom also bought yeah, me one of those like wow. those Yamaha like uh like five pad drum things with like, Oh I, man, I, I, shout I, out mom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> shout yeah, out man. Mom, yeah. She 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 was like, Oh, you know, you want to make music, let's try this out and one day, me and my homies were like hanging out, and they were like, "Yo, let's like make funny songs." So <laughs> we had like this whole funny project that we did, and I like burnt CDs and passed it out at school and stuff. Uh-huh. Cool, you know, <laughs> but yeah, that that's oh, wow. That's what like got me started in in the really like you know what I can actually maybe take this serious, you know. And then I started rapping, and 
I had a girlfriend that used to be like, oh, you suck at rapping oh, so bad no. and you're oh, beating no. trash. Oh, no. <laughs> no That's shout wacky. out to her. She, yeah, she she passed away, man. She rest in oh, peace, but she definitely got me motivated her. to be better. <laughs> Nothing wrong with somebody who actually will call us out when we could. Yeah, sometimes quality control is criticism. important. So yeah. sometimes that sort of thing is not actually a criticism. It's actually sort of a, I believe in you and I know you could do better. Right, right. Thing. You know what I mean? It's actually, uh, you know, just a, for lack of a better phrase, a form of tough love, right? You know? Yeah, sometimes yeah. People, some people can only see criticism and then some people can look at that and be inspired by it almost. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think, is there a different way for me to do this? Because I, I know I have it in me and I think this person believes I have it in me. It's the only reason they're being so tough on me is they know I could be better. You know right, I mean? right. You no. Know, I mean, who wants someone saying, oh, you're perfect all the time? True. You'll never get better. Uh, so, okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> speaking so, of which, your volumes, you, your volume needs a little more boosting, dog. Me? Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm a boosting on this thing. Dojo says the music is too Wait, loud. All right, I got you. Thank you. Here, make me louder. Mm, yeah. I think, I think I can. And uh, I got a oh, question. Yeah. Uh, oh, wait, wait, wait. Hold on. I can. I'm can. Hold, How about that? Yeah, that works for me. Um, is that better? Or I should lower it. All right. That that works for me. Let me lower it on my end. Okay. And somebody asked mm -hmm. in the chat a little ways back, uh, Mark, are you working on anything new right now? Uh, personally, not right now. But I, I am working with an artist uh, who. Uh, yeah, I want to say we also... talked about that a little last night. Yeah, yeah. I I don't know if she wants me to like talk about. Well, no, I can. Her name's Brianna Cash. She's or Brianna Castro. She's uh, an artist that signed to Interscope Records. So. Uh, we linked not too long ago and we've been working on that's huge. you know music you know so it, it's we have a track coming out soon I, I guess I'll let her do her thing as far as like promoting it and everything mm -hmm. but we're getting every, getting all the, the things worked out and we're going to be releasing music soon so I want to say I saw a little bit of teases uh, maybe on Instagram from that yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Very she cool. did yeah and and shout out to her and, and shout out to her uh uh her her producer friend pop wanzel or pop wanzel um he he actually is uh the son of dexter wanzel if you know your sample history dexter wanzel theme from the planets is one of the most sampled oh, records wow. of all time that's philadelphia wow. international you know so yeah no i i i know i'm familiar with I, mean, I live in philadelphia i'm yeah. familiar with that hell yeah. yeah um i wish i lived in philadelphia we have fun here um <laughs> <laughs> so basically you the minute you had music production software at your fingertips was when you realized like i can make something i think i like doing this i think i can start off making some beats for myself i can do i can you know i i can i can do some bars i can make some verses i can start growing this into something else and at one point did you become vincent remember good question um, I, yeah I was it before you discovered the vaporwave thing, or were you already had you already selected that name and had been experimenting with sounds previously? I, I was already experimenting with. Uh, so when I when Vincent Remember was the inception of Vincent Remember, I was already like doing like beats and working with like artists there in Philly, like mm -hmm. I, you know oh, Freeway cool. and yeah and Gilly and all them guys. You working with like Freeway? That. Yeah, I got a I got a track with Freeway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who's what? Freeway? What? Free, I live under a rock. A very famous Philadelphia rapper who was signed to Rockefeller uh, no at one shit. point as well. Yeah. I, I live under yeah, a rock, yeah. Mark, by the way. So thank yeah, you for, no, uh, was, for cluing me in. He was signed. I just seen if I don't know if you guys seen the, the new uh, Fresh Prince of Bel Air. I just seen him on that. I'm like, oh, oh the, cool, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah the, uh, the, 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 the sort of like drama uh, version of it, right? Yeah, it's, it's interesting, you know. Oh, don't but, tell me there's a gritty reboot of the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. It, it is. Oh it is. man, <laughs> somebody, no, I, I like somebody that idea. doing no, lines in the back idea. room of some bathhouse. Oh my God, here's the gritty history of Uncle Phil or some shit. No, yeah, <laughs> that's kind of, a, of no, you know. I, well, didn't they Carlton. do that with uh, the Archie comics and everything too? Already oh, do, right? When will they stop? Yeah, they're supposed to be doing it with Family Matters next. <laughs> no, no they're, <laughs> they're gonna have the gritty backstory of um or Urkel, uh, Urkel, <laughs> fucking Carl of uh, Carl Winslow. 
He's actually a bad cop. <laughs> oh my god. No, all right. Well, hold I'm on. Not okay Wait. With this. I got to All right. Hold on. We have to rewind for a moment here because I have to understand how you be got in contact with how, when did the really when did you start producing when did you produce with freeway and when did that happen exactly again what time right, frame let's is hear this the story so yeah can you talk do you talk a little bit about producing music with freeway because i'm very interested in that I, i'm 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 kind of get, go ahead i'll just stop talking please do go so the the timeline of that is i, I yeah. used to when i was a rapper and uh -huh. i was like you know what i'm gonna start making beats for myself a guy I was very cool with named daddy yo Introduced me to this guy named Saint San. Saint San used to, uh, he was signed to Will I Am back in the day, mm -hmm. and uh, you know they made like amazing music that is never going to come out. Hopefully one day it does come out because it, it, it's oh, really good. Man. You know. Whoa, wait, what? Why did it never come out? Yeah, I want to know this too. I, I, yeah, I don't. I, I guess I don't. I don't know, man. I guess it happens all the time, yeah. actually. Honestly, <laughs> you know what I mean. That stuff. happens all the time. Is somebody yeah, produces this stuff shit is that good, and it it's, is. Oh, it's almost released on the major label, but I guess there's only so much they can do. Things yeah. fold, influences fade, and then they just get shelved. I've seen it actually happen a bunch of times. Yeah, and, and think about and it. Tragic. That kind of happened with him, but I was working on Saint Sans project. Mm -hmm. Saint San has been in the music industry for a very long time. He got signed back in like 2001 to Universal. He he's friends with Nelly and yeah. whatever else. So. All these wow. guys in the music industry, you know, know him as being like a writer, producer. So one day we were working on a record and Freeway, you know, they have a relationship with each other, came in, heard the record. And he's like, y'all want to get on it. And then Gilly the Kid got on the record, mm. too. So wow. we wow. just, you know, had had that record there. And, and it came out on one of Freeway's projects. Uh, uh, I think it's called uh, Black Santa. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I love that. Wow. 2012. Oh, God damn. Fascinating. Yeah, 10 man. years ago. Wow. We. Yeah. What's two, the, two years before Vincent Remember? <laughs> what's the story behind yeah. the moniker <laughs> Vincent Remember? What does it mean? Um, I don't. Yo, one day I was in in the house with the because I, I have three children and my my you have three young, kids. Yeah, I have three children. Yeah, wow. <laughs> they're all like stair step <laughs> kids. <laughs> oh wow. But um, I think I was like in the room with my youngest and, and I just put her to sleep and I was thinking about this this dude named Vincent that um I used to fight all the time when I was in elementary school. What? And, <laughs> and I looked what? at like... It's yeah, crazy it's, I figured this was an anime story. reference or something. <laughs> nah, I just was thinking about that and I'm like, Vincent. And then I seen the word remember on the wall and I'm like, Vincent, remember. I'm like, oh, oh no shit, that clicks. It's, it's a great so name. Remember. It's a great it it's is. a great name. It's very evocative. And now it's even more evocative that I know the story behind it. You know, just like, oh, that, this guy I used to, you know, I don't even know what he's doing now. I just like, oh, God, of all the things I can remember, this is one of the things for some reason. And it's just, oh man, I and wonder Vincent how that shaped me. No anyway, idea. Vincent, remember. This is no idea. Wow, that's um, that's a fascinating reason behind the yes. name. Interesting stuff. Okay, so that's really kind of interesting that you come from this world of um, producing for uh, hip hop artists, and you're in that scene, and then you just sort of, uh, you, you know, you you move towards the vaporwave world. You definitely do have a lot of uh, varied interests and a lot yeah. of like varied, like you know. You, you know, you you have a lot of varied interests and a lot of varied influences. It seems like. Yeah, yeah. I, I actually just wanted to add on to that too, because I'm I'm thinking about like just because when I used to fight Vincent all the time, one time <laughs> okay. I, Go ahead. I Go ahead. one one time I kicked Vincent and that like made him really fucking mad. Like, how could you do this to me? You're supposed to fight fair. You're supposed to do what I do. <laughs> And and now I'm thinking about Vincent Remember, and the reason why I started Vincent Remember is because like I'm working with all these hip hop artists, and it's like they're taking their sweet ass time like with music, and it's like oh I gotta wait till the temperature is right to dip my toe in. It has to be like this. It has to be like that. And I'm like, yo, this I, I found vaporwave, and I'm like, yo, this shit is exactly what I feel. Like why do we have to take our time? you know mm, doing yeah. something that that the like the this is for the world this isn't for your personal fucking ears like you know wow. i i would like to appeal to the world and and share and have these conversations with people about things that i'm interested in very wow. cool you know 
appreciate that. Oh my God, someone passion. said, I wonder if Vincent Love remembers that. that. <laughs> that's good though, man. That's real cool. There's definitely, yeah, so there, you definitely have like an urgency streak in you. Mm -hmm. Like you're like, you have something to yeah, say, you want to do it. Spot. You're tired of, you know, you, it, it can be like exhaust. It's exhausting to deal with people who just um, think it's all about them or who to think that everything needs to be perfect before they can do something. Perfection is a lot of times the enemy of getting anything done, right? You know what yeah, I mean? Talk. Like the, for real. I'm a perfectionist. So, and it's so like impractical. Do you know what perfection is? But perfection is such a subjective concept at the end of the day. Like, what does that even mean? And what you think right. is perfect isn't what someone else thinks is perfect. Absolutely. So why focus? Why worry? You know what I mean? Right. Do the thing, make the thing, put the thing out well, there. Well, there's a point of diminishing returns thing. where, right. like, if you put too yeah. much time into something, you're wasting time. Like, you're you're not getting other things done, and it's only getting like marginally better. It might actually be getting worse at a certain point. Like, well, per yeah, exactly, yeah, absolutely. Like, how exactly. do you guys and decide also, when you're done working on a song? You know what I mean? Like, I've always wondered me? that. Me, both of you. Uh, why, is it, uh, Vincent? You go first. Um. I, I decide when Vincent. <laughs> I get to it. Well, I'll I let my I'll let my children hear it or I'll let my girlfriend okay. hear it. I'm like, what do you think about this? And it's like, oh, I really like this. And it's like, okay, well, I'm done with that. Let's go to the next oh, cool. one. As soon as, as, soon as like they're that. like, this is oh. cool. I like this, you know, it's like, all right, cool. That's that's my gauge to know, like, that's all right, sweet. let's move forward because somebody's going to like it. Mm -hmm. Oh, very interesting. Yeah, I like that a lot. Um, For me, it's um, it's just it. I don't know. It just it feels done. When it's done, okay. it feels done, right. and I'm tired, and I can't do anything more and with I'm tired. it. And I'm gonna send it to somebody else to master it now. <laughs> exactly. Like, uh, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, Very I've cool. done everything I can, and it's. I don't know if it's perfect because I don't even know what perfect is. At the end of the right. day, it's you subjective. can look at perfect as like, well, true, but also perfect can just be a process, and that pro and the process of perfect. Yeah, dude, and like. You know, maybe this song isn't perfect, but maybe you get better with the next one that gets closer mm -hmm. to perfect, or the next one gets Real closer time. to perfect. And then, like, perfect is just, like, your whole career. At the end of the day, is just moving towards getting to that, like, uh, to, you know, to whatever that is. You know what I mean? And it doesn't have to just be with the small details. It can be just a, a giant arc of trying to get to perfect. And in that arc is all, is your whole body of work. You know what I mean? Like, the first thing you made wasn't that great when you look back at it, but, you know, like, what if you spent all that time trying to make that first thing you made perfect, and here you are, like, ten things out, and you, like, look at that first thing that you, like, worked until it was perfect, and you're like, that's not perfect at all. Right. My idea of what perfect has changed so much. You know what right, I mean? Right. I guess that's why they remaster stuff. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, very much. Um, all right, can I ask another question? Yes, please do. Uh, Mark? Uh, so, we know kind of how you got into music, and when you decided to start making music what made you decide to do it but i don't know when did when did music in general click with you like when you were a kid was there something that you heard that you're like oh man i really i really love music i really am interested in music what was the first song or artist that really moved you and got you into it and got you into music in general not even just making it's it wonderful but question. just experiencing music you know being I, my earliest Memories was Michael and Janet Jackson. Those were my earliest memories. You talked about you know. that. You sample a lot yeah. of Janet in your music. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah, a great, great effect. Rhythm that's Nation actually, is such a great My mom always used yeah. to say, like, that's the first thing, like, the first... But yeah, the, the first word that I spoke, or the first words that I... Not spoke, but were able to read was Rhythm Nation. Like, that album means really? so much to me that's because, like... I love that album. It's one of the best pop albums Oh, yeah. Ever. Yeah. Top tier and, and, Janet. Yeah, yeah, from top to bottom, like I, I still play the last three tracks to go to sleep. You know that. Oh, wow. really? Like cool. that? That's it, it. It mean that album meant so much to me, and, and the same thing with Michael Jackson. And, and you know, I was born in '89, so like right around that time, you know, Moonwalker came out. I didn't watch Michael Jackson Moonwalker like a million fucking times. Mm -hmm. You know, because it was just like this dude was magical. Like I didn't even yeah. think this dude was real, man. <laughs> yeah, no, I didn't either. There's literally like, I thought Michael Jackson was just like a superhero. Like, cause exactly. I had the similar experience watching Moonwalker. And like, I feel like, I don't even know if I'm misremembering it, but there's like, I feel like there's a point where like kids are like, Michael Jackson's timeless. not real. He's not, and like- He's not real. <laughs> well, I thought that like kids were mocking this kid. He's like, he is real, I've seen him and like, I might be just making that up in my mind now, but I watched that That's too, and really I thought funny. he was like, I thought it was a guy playing Michael Jackson, and like, cause like, you know, he turns into like a fucking robot and shit in that thing, yeah. and like, you know, I I didn't know 
thought this was like a yeah, there was a movie. Like in the same way, everything else I watched was like uh, people actors playing a character. Yeah, one of those like Mandela Effect type things. Really either. That's funny. Yeah, I didn't know Michael. I thought Michael Jackson was like another superhero when I was a kid because I didn't know when I saw Moonwalker specifically. Yeah, I I remember like having this thought like it just hit me. I was like, yo, does Michael Jackson use the bathroom? <laughs> yeah, I heard it on hot takes. Does he do? Is he like us? Like, what does he do? Like, where's the line between human and Michael Jackson? Um, <laughs> that's like um, Moonwalker is a really, really inspiring thing to watch for the first time when you're a kid. Like that shit will stick with you. Of like just the power of a music and storytelling in like a weird um, because it's like very surreal. So it's like. Probably like one of my first um, interactions with like surrealism, surrealism is probably is that Moonwalker. Shit. Yeah, because it's yeah. so great. strange and like I things break out into music and then like you know it's like I don't know. I mean, anyway. some of those old so Don you'd Bluth say that movies were fucking weird too. Don Bluth, like the uh, yeah, um, like like the Secret of Nim. That's all dogs go to. Oh, the Secret of Nim. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's great. Absurd, mm -hmm. absurd. Uh, NCXKD says, "How did Interstellar Love come together?" Yeah, how did that happen? Yeah, it came together because, you know, telepaths sending me those cryptic, you know, fucking <laughs> transmissions, uh, comments, transmissions, uh, yeah, 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 transmissions, fucking exactly. Decoder ring messages. <laughs> yeah, so he had me, uh, Luke had me uh, up like, I love him. Yeah. <laughs> I love him. Um, wow. Okay. And oh, then um, how did the yeah. collaboration process go with that? I want to know this, too. Because I'm always interested in collaborations, and I, I'd love to know, like, how did that go? Like, did you send something? Did he send something? Well, it's a split Which album, isn't it? Finish? Yeah, 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 but, yeah, yeah, but how did you, like, organize who was going to do what, how long it was going to be? So the the initial track, the actual title track, Interstellar Love, he sent that to me first and was like, yo, can, you know, could you, like, add something here? Like, maybe some atmosphere and stuff. And if you listen, it's kind of like birds chirping in the background and stuff. Mm -hmm. So that was, like, the uh, just the basis of, like, what we were going to do. And then he, he presented the idea, okay, let's do a split album rather than, you know, sending tracks back and forth and doing mm -hmm. it that way where, you know, he could take his time to pick the tracks that he wanted to, you know, uh, work with. And then I picked the tracks that I wanted to work with where you know and then he came up with the whole concept for it as far as you know this this whole storyline behind it and whatnot but i i was really inspired by you know records that i've you know heard as a kid or or you know that that induced a nostalgic factor you know especially mm -hmm. like the uh you know two sons the the last track on 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 my my end of the split which is uh, a michael jackson record you know um mm -hmm. It was a, it was unreleased at one point, but it came on the '80s, and, and it just, and you know, it every time like spring comes, I listen to that record because it's so like it's so poppy and upbeat, but it's also nostalgic at the same time. Like I want people to see and hear what I hear in this record, and just loop, mm. you know, what you know makes me feel euphoric, you know. Very so cool. that that. Yeah. Yeah, that's how that came in. Do you re-listen to your flips very often? Like, do you like them I, better than the originals? I I do. I, I don't know if I'm the only one, or I don't know if everybody does that, but I really like... Oh, you know I'll Skelly listen to listens to this shit over and over. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yes. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, because... Well, you know, you it's almost like a process of trying to understand yourself, too, when you do that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you're listening back to your own art, and you're, like, talking to yourself. You're having a conversation with yourself, and you're trying to discover who you are, and you're trying to discover um, your voice. You know what I mean? You know, and uh, when you make your next piece of art, maybe you'll understand your voice even better the more you study yourself. You know what I mean? This is the whole process of life in general is the whole process of... Uh, being, uh, you know, <laughs> building that connection between, you know, this external world that you live in, the external self that you are, and the thing inside you, the operator inside you, right? This is like, this, I mean, I don't know. I think that's what life should be is a continual process of trying to make your inside world as sim, you know, to, to, you know, to externalize your uh, your inside world, right, to the outside, yeah. right? And what yeah. better way to do that than to go back to the art you've made and to re-experience it? Or, as Mark is saying, to go back to those times in your life that meant something and re-examine them and um, dissect them, right? In the same way that you listen to that song every time spring happens, right? Yeah. Or in the same way that you listen to the flips 
and the edits you've made and the Vaporwave songs that you've made to figure out the parts of the songs that really had that deep meaning to you. And, um, you know, and it, this is just, it's a conversation between the selves, the outside self and the inside self to try yeah. and marry the two together, right? I mean, I don't know. I don't know. Miz, just, that's how I feel, at least. Uh, anyway. Uh, um, inside you, right. you are two wolves. <laughs> Inside you are two wolves. They're both listening to bathroom vibes. <laughs> they're both. They're both <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Um, hey, I want to know. Um, so I know you were encouraged to sing. That you have, and you have an absolutely wonderful voice in oh, the in the out on your album. By the way, um, really great voice. Uh, 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 very unique voice too. It's distinctly your own, and I love the way that you produce it too. You know, the way that you. It, one of the toughest things, and this is. I would really like to get into this a little bit because I think that a lot of people probably need some advice for adding vocals to their music. Some people want to do vocals, but they don't know how to do it. They don't know where to start, or maybe they're a bit anxious about doing it. I do vocals with a bunch of my tracks as well, and I know that a big challenge is is trying to find the space to put it in. You know, you have to work with new frequencies now. You have to dull other ones down to fit you, and everybody's voice is different, so you have to figure that out but do you have some recommendations to people who want to put vocals into their music and kind of you know do you have any recommendations of what how they should start doing that or or, or what they should do or any, any techniques or, or ideas that they should think about before they do it um i i think one of the the the, the coolest things is and i'm gonna you know mention michael jackson again and his whole song writing process is, is being able to just be free and and you know if you are creating a piece of music allow yourself to you know hum a melody or you know just just do a melody just just be free and 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 you know right. al allow yourself to, to go Trying down to that path and, yeah and ad lib something and just see where that takes you like i, I i'm thinking about the song rated r that i that i oh. you know came up with i was great working of that work yeah, thank you. I was working with that for a, a little minute, and then you know, every time I think about like the lyrics of it, like it doesn't make any fucking sense. But it's I don't know. It's just like it was an expression. Like I don't I don't know what this is, but I want to express myself and and just being allowed to express myself. And and I've and I've learned like you know over the years, like I, it's it's not really about you know how much content you can put out or you know making money from your content or you know or True. you know having the the best or the the biggest you know fucking response from it is just being able to create because when you were speaking about the the ability to have that conversation with your external and in in, in, in in internal self you know it's it's being able to you know take this abstract thing to understand what your reality is because it's, it's kind of like the dream world you know we're like this this dream world is a, a response of like you know our external reality and that's what music is to yeah. me it's it's this I, like what the fuck is this you know so Very just true. allow yourself to create just yeah. just be just be you be is be you as as much as you can be as possible while you're trying to add vocals to something fucking yeah. i don't know whistle on a song do something shit <laughs> <laughs> well said that's a hot wow. one wow that's great. Question I love for the you, idea Mark. that you're like the lyrics don't have to make sense. They just have to be an expression. You know, they they are, you know, just a vocalization of, of dreams and feelings and they don't have you don't have to worry so much about them making too much sense. They do make sense because you said them, so they mean something and people can interpret that how they want. Exactly. You know? Exactly. Oh wait, go ahead. You question for you, Mark. I wanna know what is an act that you like a lot that you can guarantee that we've never heard of? Put me on something that you've never heard of. Uh... Okay, <laughs> <laughs> that's a tough question. I'm... Yeah, Isaac's questions are tough, and they're fun. They are fun. They're very fun. I'm trying to think here. Uh, there's this this cool dream pop like okay, uh, freaking um ethereal pop band from like the late 90s early 2000s that i listened to named they, they call clairvoyant clairvoyant i don't know if you ever not familiar no yeah. oh wow <laughs> that's my they're shit like, though yeah and uh their album time in the maiden is really good and their their second the third album uh i forgot the name of their album whatever 
That's they're okay. Like, yeah, we'll look like it up. Cockney twins mixed with like fucking Ooh. twins. Wow. Yeah, it's it's an wow. interesting. This is why I ask this shit, man, because I know man has some good taste. It's always yeah, really telling man. whenever somebody people, gives you like a are, deep man. cut, like something that they Jesus like that Christ. nobody else has heard. That's what I want to get about. Everybody who comes on this show has such fucking eclectic and fascinating taste. Nobody's is ever the same either. I have I have no to idea say. you, you know were a shoegaze I mean? fan. This is so exciting. Hey, how did you get into? How did you get into shoegaze and all this other music? You know, you started off in. Oh, well, um, Lux found in it. oh wow, she found Jesus Very Christ! Cool. Of course she did. Of course she did. Um, so how? So okay. So take me a little bit more through your musical journey. You started off, um, you were very influenced by Michael Jackson, by Janet Jackson, and obviously by hip hop. When did other things start creeping in there? When did vaporwave and ambient music and I don't know, like indie rock and uh, and shoegaze and um, you know I would experimental love to hear the stuff and electronic music, electronic music and in general, when did that electronic music in general too? Like when did that start sneaking yeah. into your influence? Tell us, tell us all the phases. So we're, we're going. Yeah. After the, the Michael Jackson phase, it was late '90s. You know, I'm, I, I, I'm like, okay, I don't want to listen to hip hop no more. Fucking corn and Limp Biscuit and shit is like big at the time. I got into uh -huh. that. Yeah, that oh yeah, Skelly loves that shit. I can't stand it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we all need a way into other things. Yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah, for yeah. sure. So anyway, so from 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 the new metal, what did that lead to? That led into like the, the the gothic rock and like the that makes sense black metal and shit like that and then you know <laughs> black man has been everywhere. Jesus Christ! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I expect nothing. I expect so, nothing less from a vaporwave producer though right. than to have all these different influences, phases, and to be just fascinated by music in general and all the different strange niches of it. You know what I mean? I would expect nothing less from Mark. <laughs> True. I mean? Go ahead. <laughs> Go so, ahead, continue. So the the I was I found this band called the Birthday Massacre and like they oh were like, shit yeah, yeah. They, they they were really like influential on like my internet you know uh, like my introduction to like what the internet can do for a band and mm. their community like there was a few people in their community I got really cool with this girl named Ali sent me this box of CDs that she burnt it was oh, like that's maybe too like. Cool. 50 or wow. 60 CDs, oh, and wow. that's how oh, I got boy. into, like... That's a very special my... gift. Yeah, Especially she, in the late 90s. Me... Yeah, well, this was, like, 2003 she gave it. Like, 2004 she gave it to you. me. So, one... She she shipped it out to me. That had my bloody Valentine and... Yeah! Wow. yeah. And Man, like... these, these people that give us these gifts mm -hmm. like yeah. that are so invaluable. Like and that I one to, like, person gotta... that put you onto the good shit. You always we have a, yeah. we've had like you all and like those people are like the greatest people in the world uh -huh. once it was like here and I they give you a box person. of and they just give you a box of music and that you yeah. just like sift through and like you're not the first person to come on and tell us something like that where someone like a family member or a friend gave them just like a hard drive full of crazy like fiber had like or a, an like, iPod like, or some like shit. uncle or something that gave him like a like a hard drive full of music I know Uniwa had like a had like a person who gave him a relative that gave him like a whole like collection of CDs to start looking through, like that's like the most invaluable Those people, people man. Invaluable. They do so much, and they like and it's like it's always so much in there. You know what I mean? Yeah, Just, yeah. Go ahead, go ahead though. So she gave you this this C, like fifty CD box, parts of fifty yeah. CDs, something like that, with all kinds of different stuff on it, huh? Yeah, and, and sh shout out to her, and also shout out to one of my my uh, friends, Tani, too, because they at the same time were like introducing me into. You know things that I haven't heard before, and also another another guy, may he rest in peace. Uh, mm -hmm. His name was Lewis. He uh, he got me into the Cock Two Twins and and really placebo. I, you know, oh wow! <laughs> I, I don't know why. Placebo, like, a little trip yeah, hop. Placebo yeah. could they also constructed very well made songs too. You yes, know what I mean? They, they have like a lot yeah. of like they have a lot of hooks in their songs too. You know what yes, I mean? And like yes, man, do I respect the fuck out of people that can write some hooks? You know what I mean? I don't listen to Placebo every day, but I do understand that those people are great songwriters at the end of the day. And, and interesting songwriters too, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I, everything every time I think about placebo, I think about like uh like Pure Morning was one of the Pure big ones. Morning, yeah. Yeah, and every me and every you. Like, yeah, they they mm -hmm. exactly uh Lux said it in the uh <laughs> in the uh, comments there. But yeah, um yeah, so during that time period. Better. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> 
friend. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> but yeah, during during that time period, like two thousand three, two thousand four, like you know, that that got me into a whole bunch of other things, whether it was Cocktail mm. Twins or you know, uh, My Bloody Valentine. But as far as electronic music, I think my real introduction to electronic music, like that that's that was easily digestible at the time, was. The Postal Service. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Indie yeah. Tronic music people. really blew who, up who right was, when that album that's, came out. That was... Um, yeah. That album was Let so me tell you, man. No, dude, that's Hotel Pools last time we was saying the same thing. Honestly, you know dude, I, mean? I still love... What Hotel Pools was up? saying the same same thing. I Yeah, absolutely. That man. album is fire, I, man. And I was I never a huge like Death Cab fan, but The Intel is a very, very skilled... Well, yeah, I always yeah, love that one. Well, there's that one The Intel... Dude, there's that one DNTL song with Ben Giver before they were Postal Service. That's why the Postal Service Chan. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, was, I was just I love that the song. Other day. I was just oh, playing really? it yeah, for my that co-worker. Great. There were some wow. beautiful <laughs> songs that, that that guy made, man. For yeah, sure, for sure. Okay, so yeah, I think that. So yeah, like I'm, also, we're just saying like that was Plaza, actually Hotel Pools. It's the Intel. Yeah. The Intel. The Intel. The Intel. Mm. <laughs> I read it in an interview. Oh wait, how do you pronounce it? Say that one more time. Wait, I didn't know this. It's, how do you it's pronounce like it? the Intel. Oh, like D Intel. Yeah. I, I okay. I read it in an interview. I've been calling it Dental for years. My bad. <laughs> yeah. Fight! 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 <laughs> Whoops. I'm, I'm, I'm wrong. I know nothing to play about. I was I'm incorrect. <laughs> um, wow. That's how many hours stuff. per day do you think you listen to music, Mark? Uh. If there's 24 hours in a day, maybe like six or seven, if there's cool. something playing most of the day. So, yeah. So, I, wait. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no. I was just going to say sometimes I do have to turn music off and, and like kind of reset myself. But, yeah, it's it's playing a lot during the day. <laughs> yeah, we all have to Honestly, that, there's know, not man. a moment music isn't on in my house. Really? I have to I stop mean, for a little bit. Yeah. I respect people that that like, like just have the TV on in the background or like actually silence. But then I'm also like, I want something on at all times. Like, ah, uh, no, I, I it's, respect music is that, perfect because you could be it, doing other things while it's on. You know. Well, that's why you're like the top DJ. You know what I mean? Because you're just always nope. doing that. <laughs> that's why he's the, the kind of DJ he is. He's he's always on, on that tip. Um, but hold on. So, did you ever sing before the Culture Vulture album came out? Did you ever do any acts that, uh, did you ever do the singing, or was that your first foray into it? Yeah, I mean, I did a little bit, with Camp Candle, I did a little bit of singing. Before that, I was just doing the rapping thing. I mean, I, I, I wasn't, I stopped rapping seriously in like maybe like 20, like 2009 or something like that, but I, I mean, all the stuff that I've ever sung on, it's kind of like on my hard drive. Like, mm. like I still got this one Vincent Remember track that I'm like, I don't know if I, that's the only one I'm like, I don't You're going to have to start a Patreon, out. dog. Why? Wait, 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 wait. Why Why should you not put it out? Hold on. Go, or go when on. somebody needs a comp for some like cause that's very, very important to you, <laughs> donate that oh, shit. Oh, I have like a back, I have a backlog of like out, of songs that like, I don't think this will fit on an album, but maybe one day I'll use it for a comp. Yeah, exactly. I, I mm -hmm. think that's, that's what it is. Maybe there's two songs, but. You know, the, the interesting th thing about the two songs that I haven't put out is that they're like movie based. Like one one is called really? Bring, Bring Back Sue Young because I was watching Rush Hour one day. <laughs> That's really funny. That sounds fun. And then, <laughs> yeah, and the other one is a, is about E.T. I don't... I, I, I really want to hear that. I love E.T. Wow. the Extraterrestrial. Man, that sounds great. That Maybe one day. so good Maybe inside. Maybe one day. Oh, man. The, the soundtrack... Uh, I, I remember I bought the soundtrack with my kids and I used to play it for them while they were, you know, drifting off to sleep and I'd just start crying like I gotta tear this shit oh, off. Yeah. This is too... <laughs> oh, you know what, man? We there was a question I missed. Somebody asked if you ever played Vaporwave for your kids. Yeah, yeah, all the time. All all the time. My my kids my kids are my biggest fans, you know. My wow. uh I, I did a video um on my YouTube channel with my, my daughter and my two stepdaughters where they were like dancing to uh, track I, I think i it, it's uh meng da that's the name of the track okay it's, it's on my uh my youtube <laughs> mm -hmm. i'll check that out later wait do we have other questions in the chat well lux says she's never seen et oh, unbelievable geez, really that's shocking yeah she can show you Lux's trancer seven that. but she's never seen et trancers 
Lux have trancers? Of course, Lux is into trancers. Um, wait, have you seen trancers? Wait, do we have any... Me? Yeah. Or or Mark? Have yeah, you I've seen, seen trancers? What's his? Hey, what's Probably his name? Who's the, who's the actor in all the Transfers movies? He's a what's it called? You know, really famous no. like B science fiction actor. Oh fuck! <laughs> what's his name? Mark, do you have a preferred you have any method of listening look up to music? What? Like, do you use Spotify, Pandora? Do you do your own crate digging? Um, I, I I've been using a mixture of everything. I I think I've really been like heavy on YouTube lately. Because cool. I got, I just got an NPC, and I'm like, I want to sample nice. shit, and mm. you know, YouTube has every fucking thing. <laughs> True, <laughs> you know. But yeah, man. Um, I also wanted to to to, to make this known too, because it's interesting that we got we got Lux in in the chat here. My my girlfriend's actual name is Lux. That's that's, that's interesting. What really? That's so yeah, cool. <laughs> Shout out to my girlfriend in the other room over there. <laughs> Shout out Lux. Both Luxes. Shout out both Luxes, absolutely. What is your go-to karaoke song? <laughs> yeah, that's a good I would like to know that too, actually. Since I just want to say, singer. what I was referencing, I don't know if you remember, I tuned in on an Insta Live that you did during the like lockdown era when all the George Floyd uprisings were going on and, and, and it was just an awful time for everybody. And you were just DJing. And I was like, hey, play some Alexander O'Neill. And you were like, and you played, um, <laughs> um, oh, I can't remember the name of the song. It said, don't talk about my friends. Don't oh, talk yeah. about my uh, lifestyle. Criticize. Criticize. Yeah. And I was just criticize. like, bow, 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 bow. I was like, yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm a huge, like, jimmy jam and terry lewis fan like they mm. i don't know what the fuck them dudes were doing back then but they just like had like this pocket that they got into where it was like like pop music but like it was almost like the intelligent pop music but like mm. mixed with, like i don't know it, it, it was so good and alexander o'neill just kind of like exuded like their i guess uh i don't know like elegant thing that they had going best on best 80s r and right singer there. right there yeah <laughs> it was like like a it was like a r &B, it, it was yeah. like r and b sophistapop like I, it was yeah, I know yeah. exactly yeah. very classy about. and like upper class yeah yeah it's and re but vibe. relatable you know but yeah, uh yeah, yeah all that all that to say what is what is your go-to karaoke song my man oh yeah let's get back to that um, Michael Jackson's Man in the Mirror. That's my go-to. That's a good one. <laughs> nice, nice. Oh my! God. I was at a karaoke room a week and a half ago after the um, Future Club Three show. Uh, me and a bunch of the Rosewood people, and somebody put on Smooth Criminal. <laughs> oh, and really? like, it's a cool song, but you don't realize how many times you're gonna say "Annie, are you okay?" over and over and yeah. over and over. <laughs> really fast, yeah. like without getting to take a breath in. Yeah. Yeah. That song well, is so dark too. <laughs> kind of is. Yeah, isn't it, it is. God damn murder. Uh, um, <laughs> you know, that's the uh, the thing about those sort of like. And are you okay? Are you okay? Are you? you are know, you that's okay, like, Annie? Well, but the thing about that you have to understand with that sort of vocals is that you're treating the vocals almost like a drum at that point. At that yeah, point, yeah, there's it's, it's yeah. all about the rhythm of how you say the the kind syllables. Of staccato. It's just like interesting. Just treating it. Just you know, Michael Jackson is just really interesting guy. An interesting song crafter because you know using these words is like you know almost like another instrument or but but a percussive instrument you know what i mean yeah. there's a rhythm to that that yeah you know, very, very it's great true. hooks what a what a hook you know what i mean man i love it yeah yeah we got some good uh questions in the chat uh dojo oh, underscore r4 says you mentioned listening to soul and funk these days any recommendations um oh, yeah 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 I've, I've been listening to this dude lucky day for the last past week uh he, he's like i got to add yeah. that to the old list here yeah he's like like frank ocean and and um i don't know he's he's a really cool artist like that that has you know a lot of influences himself and like i'm like damn this shit is so cool uh who else have i been listening to lately i don't know man i always go back to shit that i like always listen to i i i guess i'm getting old now and shit where i'm like eh. Do I really want to? I kind of been going back to some of the classics lately too, though. Like I've been yeah. re-listening to a bunch of Bjork and like Blood Brothers and fucking Explosions in the Sky and just random shit that I used to be stuff into that you listen to when you were younger. Yeah, I mean you've seen my lists. You know, I've just been kind of yeah. revisiting mm -hmm. the old favorites. Um, so, 
I can yeah. relate. So to what you. about? Yeah. So you've been going back to things that just bring you comfort, that bring you joy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Not everything has to be a challenge. You know what I mean? And sometimes yeah, you haven't heard it in a long time, and it like it, like you have to dust the patina off of it, and it's like, oh man, I remember why I fell in love with this. Right. Right. Exactly. Exactly. You know, the other thing is like when you spent like a good oh, yeah, majority I'm, I'm of, yeah, when you spent a good majority of your life, you know, looking for so much different kinds of music, experimenting with this, you know, challenging yourself so for so long, you got to take a reprieve. You know what I mean? Yeah, we can't you just know? watch art house life, films all life the time. Is, Sometimes we exactly. gotta watch Jaws. And, you know? and the thing is, as we get as we get older, like there's more responsibilities. Life becomes more complicated. You know, you you sort of like value the fact that you did spend that time when you were young finding all the different types of music and building up that knowledge and building up that um you know and training your ears so much and now you're like you're older you have jobs you have responsibilities you're like okay i gotta take it easy for a little bit <laughs> you know what i mean I got, i've got so many other responsibilities so i want music to bring to bring me comfort it doesn't always have to be a challenge i, I did a lot of that challenge Absolutely. when i was younger that's yeah, me with yeah, films yeah. dude like i used to love experimental independent art house stuff you know the stuff you like to watch all the time and I appreciate yes. it, but like after I saw eight and a half, I was like, "All right, it's just eighties sci-fi from now on." Oh, that's <laughs> funny. I, I that's funny, man. <laughs> I'm exaggerating yeah, a little be like bit. That. But... I I get it. I know, but you know, it'd be like that, man. Life is complicated. Sometimes you need to uncomplicate it with the things you love. Soft has yeah. a good question as well. He wants to oh. know what are your thoughts on vaporwave now versus when you first started. And I kind of have an addendum question. Are you following Vaporwave still very much or not really? Started, I've been noticing like Vaporwave now has, you know, a lot of it has taken a turn towards like the, the hypnagogic or hypnagogic type style. There's a lot of like 90s nostalgia now. Yeah, yeah. And and that's definitely cool, man. I, I um, like, I, I kind of feel like the, the whole 2814 kind of like took vaporwave into a direction that like i don't know man i and, and i don't want to go like like you said you know we don't want to we don't want to punch down but mm -hmm. i, I kind of feel like certain folks you know took the narrative oh, I got my in finger the on the soundboard let's hear it <laughs> yeah uh, certain folks took the the, the the whole vaporwave thing into a direction where it's like this is how I think it should be. This is what this should be. This is how it, it's it's cyberpunk. It's this, it's that. And it's like, it, it doesn't have to be what you think it is, you know, and only mm. you, you know? Yeah. Fair. I, I think that's Nobody the thing can about control Vaporwave, like dude. It's you're, a you can't, it's impossible to, because it's just, it brings in too many different types of thinkers, too many ways of interpreting it. And uh, the fact of the matter is, it's like an, it's an anti-genre. And at the end of the day, it's a scene more than it is really even like a specific sound or a specific idea. It's a scene of like-minded artists, you know what I mean? That come together and like right. interact with each other and create and have fun in this little playground that we've curated. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And, and that that kind of like, that thing kind of like moved me a little away from like, the scene and that's that that is not represent to, that's not, that doesn't represent everyone in the scene but it's no. like you know what I, i'm now it's time for me to focus on other things so that i'm not clashing with folks or having arguments with people or anything like that because nothing comes from that an yeah. argument is just two people trying to prove their point and nothing happens afterwards so it's like whatever you know and, and shout out to folks that you know, I might have had issues with and whatever mm. else. You know, we're grown ups now, and mm. you know. Yeah, I mean, you're not good, the only you know? one that kind of quit the scene for a little bit when the whole hard vapor explosion kind of happened. It was a difficult time, you know. It separated the yeah. the the weak and well, I don't know what if I want to say weak and strong, but it it diverged in 2016, I would say. Yeah, yeah but it's cool. It's cool now. <laughs> yeah. I like it now. It's real cool now. I mean. It's real cool now. Yeah, there's some people that kind of did what you did, you know, like, I mean, Dan Mason, uh, you know, he, he, he made a lot of, like, sample-based albums, and now he has albums of just him making, like, Midwest emo music. You know, all he's just doing what he wants to do. Yeah, lots he's of people what, are doing he's it. Do, at the end, he's just, they're just, you could do what you want to do, you know what I mean? Right, exactly, exactly. And that's, that's once again, that's what this should be about, not, you know, somebody's interpretation of what you should be doing. It's like, let me fucking do me. That's word. why I, I, mean, I, I did the fucking culture vulture project because it was like, yeah. you know, I 
here in the Philadelphia region, I'm sure you can agree that mm -hmm. Baltimore club music is a staple in Philadelphia and Baltimore. I'm like, this is mm -hmm. a yeah. form of like house music that we grew up off of, you know? So yep. let me add that element into, you know, what I like to do. And yeah, I love that. I yeah. want to say your well, single even samples Lil John, doesn't it? Yeah, um, yeah. What's it yeah. called? Nice. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> It's always fun to hear like really, really risky vaporwave tracks when people mix or sample stuff that nobody else is really sampling. So, respect. Yeah, and, and shout out to Oscob. I don't know what he's doing right now, but <laughs> you know, he, he took a chance on it. I'm like, oh shit, man. Thanks, oh, you man. released that on uh, Bedlam Tapes? Yep. yep. Bedlam I did not know that. I thought it was on Business Casual. No. No, that's not that culture of just on Bedlam tapes. No and, uh, way. Uh, I thought it was on business casual. Do you Oops. have any idea like how many like phenomenal albums are on Bedlam tapes? Like I could have put that out there right now. Like just go through the back history. Like whatever you want to say about Oscob or anything else. Um, and obviously he's a controversial figure. He brings it on himself. I, he does it on purpose. He's yeah. brought, he brings it on himself. But, um, you know, it's at the end of the day, I'm pretty sure that it's all an act. But uh, anyhow, uh, the I'm, point is that no Bedlam Tapes, however, whatever, it's an act. At the end of the day, Bedlam Tapes, however, is like really, really amazing albums on it. Like, it's shocking. Like, go through the discography. I don't know. Mark, what's your... You're you not can wrong. back me up on that. I'm not wrong. Mark, yeah. am I wrong? <laughs> no, nah, nah. I mean, uh, Oscar is a polarizing, or yeah, he's a polarizing figure. So it's like, you I know, mean, I don't, I don't get why he does it. I would never. I'm literally like losing this. my I mind understand. right now. I was sure that that album was released on Business Casual. You're a hundred percent no incorrect. power decisions was. <laughs> so I'm not crazy. <laughs> Yo, whoever <laughs> said it is completely wrong. Listen, man, it's okay. It's, I, I was uh, sort of right. Album. It was just a different album. I'm known to forget. It's a I'm great album. Um. It's a great album, and that was a, it. Was a great record label uh, back in that time period. Uh, yeah, they had and, some DDS uh, on there that was pretty good. Um, I did have some DDS on there that's pretty good. Sugar it's Crystals, I think, Crazy one man. of the best DDS songs I've ever heard. Yeah. Hey, shout out to DDS. Well, shout out DDS. So, Absolutely. what is an instrument or like a, a sound when you listen to music and you're listening to something you've never heard before? Is there any instrument or sound that would just like ruin a song completely for you? <laughs> um something that'll I I don't know like let me think here something that'll ruin or even like a synth sound or production technique Ah oh, damn I I can't really think of anything right now that'll like ruin something for me I I, I think like like I, I like Sometimes when people scat, I don't. Nobody does scat anymore. But like, if I hear a scat, <laughs> in a song, I'm like, I'm oh, I'm Chris, you beat you beat you beat me to it, sir. <laughs> oh, you were gonna say scat, Mr. Scott DJ. Say, I was I was gonna do the Mr. Scat. Listen, that was like back a while ago. <laughs> You'll never live it down. <laughs> Not that long ago. <laughs> I'll never live down that I DJed a ska party back in the day. Not even that long ago. It actually, actually, sounds really hard, <laughs> to be honest. No, like it none was of that more, music is made really. out of beat grid, so that sounds really hard. You really actually. think that I was like, you really think I was like beat matching ska, or do you really, or I was just like hitting the play button? Honestly, man, whenever people are just her. like, yeah, and they're just like skanking, like they probably don't care. Listen, <laughs> it was it was a gimmick to get myself in the door so I could DJ other parties, and I knew that this would work once, and it would never work again after that. Have you ever heard of Shuby well, Taylor? Never heard of. He's Shady. like supposedly no, the worst scat man is. ever. Like if you look him up, there's videos of him badly, badly scatting, and like <laughs> it's some funny shit. It's from like early internet era. Shuby Taylor. I'm gonna check him out. Let me write Shuby Taylor down. I'll oh, do. <laughs> if you want to laugh. Oh so, yeah, I love laughing at obscure shit like that. It's fun, you know what I mean. It's just like it, I love looking at these obscure, strange things because it's just. It just reminds me kind of like how, how fun and beautiful humanity is to, uh, you know, everyone always put, puts themselves out there and does something kind of silly that's unsuccessful and maybe it's low budget or looks really bad and terrible. And I find that really inspiring. You know what I mean? I really admire the, 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 the cringy bad stuff because it's just like, 
Man, that's beautiful. It's beautiful that someone like did this thing and they put it out there and they kind of embarrassed themselves a little bit and people are laughing at them, but they still did it. They put the thing out there and half the motherfuckers laughing at them. They've never put anything out in their whole fucking life. Exactly. So, oh, shit. You know, right? Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> Go fuck yourself, critics. Go fuck yourselves. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> it's not a hot takes episode people... without someone getting told to fuck themselves. Yeah, man, most <laughs> dude, it happens. I apologize, uh, but it's true. Like you know, so many people, and you know, like it's so easy to be snarky and criticize, and then it's really hard to actually put yourself out there and do something. True. You know what I mean, it's so easy to criticize someone or try to bring somebody down or to, you know say this person's a bad person because of this or this person's a shitty artist because of this or this person's but like yeah, motherfucker most of the people who do that i've never even done anything um anyway yeah. right you know what's the, right, what's the so line that's been going what's the line that's been going around on the internet lately a lot they don't make statues of critics you know everyone's like uh i was <laughs> quoting that, that one lately oh it's all over the place. all right so Keep converse up. question we talked briefly about something you don't like hearing what is something that you do like hearing if there's a specific instrument production technique or sound that like gets you every single time wall of sound like i love oh, that, that, that's why yeah. I'm a fan. Like, oh my god cry every time oh, yeah yeah it, but it has to be in a way where it's like more like cock two twins and less like mazzy star for me like i i like i see that. what you're saying yeah, yeah. <laughs> no i i i understand the distinction as well yeah. All right. Yeah. I think about oh some God. of the. Um... Wait, hold on. I can't. I didn't, I lost everybody. It, it, I lost everybody for a minute. Right. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Oh. Yeah. Okay. I hear and see you just fine. Perfect. Perfect. You know, man. I think of some of the Phil. I think of some of the Phil Spector sound stuff too. You know what I mean? Oh man, Phil Spector. You know some of the production work he's done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he was a great producer. It wasn't a great person, but yeah. he wasn't a great person. Oh, I mean, really? That's... But like you know, like you know, "Be My Baby" by the Ronettes. You know that song is phenomenally produced. You know what I mean? Yeah, I always think about the Christmas shit when I think of Phil Spector. Christmas. Oh, that's a great. That's my favorite Christmas song. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> Christmas, baby, please come home. Yeah, that's great. That song is so awesome. Yeah. So going back to shoegaze, since like I really, really want to take this time to geek out with you about it, is there any particular like song or album that you think everyone needs to hear at least once? And the shoegaze. It doesn't have to be shoegaze, I guess, but. Or... Um. Hmm. Can you give me a song that you think everybody should hear? Yeah. I mean, so you're you're obviously hey. pretty knowledgeable about and familiar with like the first, the original shoegaze movement. Clearly, yeah. you have some interest in the, the second wave because of clairvoyant. Um. Um. It's not really shoegaze, but you know, it's uh, that movement that was going on in in you know the UK at the time. The the Stone Roses when they came out with oh, I Want to Be a it, I love that song. It it really embodies like that 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 kind of wall of sound, and of course they're not a shoegaze band, but like little influence. The, you no, know, in the same yeah. way like the Jesus and Mary chain is kind of like that. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. And the song, it, and it, the lyrics are so minimal, but it means so much because it's like when we speak about this industry or. Me. Yeah, we speak about this industry and people are like, oh, don't sell your soul to the devil. It's like, it's already in me. It's there already. I can't, it's you know. already in me. Oh, like, man, that's, I, you're right. I'm, I'm that. Like, you know, you can get to that play. You can be that if you want to be that. Like, you know, at the end of the day, I, I just want to be adored. You know, I just want people to recognize who I am. I'm both of these things. I'm all these things, you know. So I, I think everybody should listen to that song because it means so Very much cool. <laughs> yeah Appreciate wow name, that guys. is as a phenomenal choice by the I way i know dude I'm, I'm, really, I'm learning so really, much from this man really, today you know what i really loved that uh explanation for why uh but don't sound last yeah, he's already in me yeah this is now, why now we it's made stuck hot in my head. Takes, man for moments like this oh wow love it love it how do love you feel it. about sample free vaporwave somebody asks 
Uh, Sample Free Vaporwave is, is pretty cool. I, I remember one time, um, or, or when I when I first started getting into the scene, it was this dude that came out with this project uh, that was like, um, uh, kind of like a a, a business. Um, I, I don't know what it was. Kind of like his, his business day, and it kind of business just, day. I don't know what the hell it was. I just <laughs> in one day and the sounds were like. Doo, 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 doo. And I'm like, oh shit, this is nice. I'm I'm proud of like people actually, you know, taking the time to like create these different things in the vapor. Was it business <laughs> travel bonanza or Donovan Hikaru? I Donovan Hikaru. People are, I people know. are naming names. Donovan Hikaru. It, it, it might have been Donovan Hikaru because <laughs> it sounds familiar. But I, mm. I I was like, yo, I like where this is going. It even inspired me to create this track called uh. Uh, I, I, uh, a it was basically like my rendition of like the hold music, you know, because there's always oh. uh, I, like an opus it's number. You're talking on. about the um opus. Uh, was it opus number? Opus number one. one right? Yeah. Yeah. You know there was their whole um there's yeah my pet flamingo did a whole uh compilation and it was the theme was hold music. Yeah, yeah they yeah, did. Yeah. Didn't a they? lot of people remade uh, Opus No I Eyeliner remade Opus Number no. One. Oh, uh, I think awesome. I think most people were doing versions of I actually had a song on that too, uh, to tell you the truth. Uh, but mine was an original composition for right. fake hold music for the uh, children's you know uh, you know, Christian children's hotline. I mean <laughs> fake hold music for that and I it was need just to really to evil. This. That sounds fun. It was just really evil stuff. <laughs> like, I don't know. Evil stuff. You would. Yeah, I did, and like I also sampled like a bunch of like you know, famous uh, choir stuff. I don't. know. Anyway, let's get back to the conversation at hand. Uh, any other questions? Yes, Those syllabus questions? has a great question. What's an album? Absolutely. Because we're actually, it's actually already an hour and a half. Believe it or not. Yeah, so, we're we're, like, we're gonna have to get, get down. Questions. Oh, I gotta check Go. the anonymous submissions in a minute. But syllabus says, Ooh, "What fun. is an album? Absolutely, no one should hear." Um, anything by Corey Feldman. Please don't listen to his music. <laughs> it's like, no. Oh, that you don't want to listen to the Angel uh, album or whatever the fuck it's called, right? Yeah, no. I, 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 I guess Pacific Plaza. Eventual Infinity did curate that Hold Music album. Uh, shout out Eventual Infinity. Phenomenal. Love that guy. Hayden, Continue. I'm awesome sorry. Awesome guy. Needs to come on the show. Love Hayden. Yo, well, we got to get everybody on eventually. Just, I like to call him time. Pad Sinkington because one time I was drunk and it was before I knew who Pad Shinnington was and I thought that Pad... Payton was Pad Chinnington, so I called him Pad Chinnington. And then one time he made fun of me because he said DJing was just pressing sync and play. So I call him Pad uh. Sinkington. <laughs> I never use the fucking sync button. That's because you're a uh. good DJ. No, it's because I don't fucking <laughs> trust the sync button. He's going to fuck you up. You got to actually make sure it sounds right before you start hitting that sync button. Right, right. Um, I just, just adjust your tempos, man. Just adjust your tempos until it sounds correct. Um, anyway. Well, we, 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 I, do we interrupted Mark? Was he in the middle of a thought? <laughs> what were we talking know. about? I don't remember. I, I was also going to uh, respond to Dojo in the comments. They asked, don't uh, listen what? to Corey Feldman. That's what it was. Never yeah, Corey Feldman. <laughs> <laughs> right. I, oh, you're going to respond. Go ahead. Yeah, no. Corey Feldman, but also uh, they asked about the Chameleons. And yeah, I love the Chameleons. It's one of my favorite bands. But uh, mm -hmm. yeah, Corey Feldman... Um, I, I think it's more like theatrics, and and I kind of think it's like satirical with Corey Feldman. It's not really like a serious thing that he's doing. I just watched it one day, and I'm like, what the fuck is he doing? Like, what is this? <laughs> yeah, he was on like the Today Show and everything performing when he had that uh, that album out. Uh, you know, <laughs> well, it's so kind of like you know, you know, I think about Corey Feldman sometimes, and I, it's like, what do you do? with the rest of your life after like the time when you peak is over and it happens so early you're like i was a big star until i was 21 and i'm going to live another 40 or 50 or 60 years and what do you do with that time i you know i it's probably a very confusing thing sometimes you end up with some bizarre fucking band like that Corey feldman angel band or whatever it's just you're just like what the fuck do i do with the rest of my fucking life you know what I mean? Like, I'm always going to be known as Corey Feldman. How do, what do I do with this now? Well, do you oh, think shit, there's such thing as objectively bad music? I, I, I don't I'm, I, I wouldn't know like, what to do, you man. You're I'm not a fan of, of Corey Feldman. Stupid fucking angel band, too. <laughs> do you think uh, some art is just objectively bad? And and that's with without them knowing that they're bad. They're just like, yo, I just want to just be 
me and create music and it's just terrible mm -hmm. like it is is it are you referring to that type like of like music? like that one rapper ice jj fish where he just has that really screechy voice like you know just the the room yeah, but music I'll, I'll, like is there such thing as stuff that's like so bad it's good or <laughs> you know room but music <laughs> room oh that's really funny isaac that was a good one uh yeah I, like i i Oddly enough, I, I listen to Ice JJ Fish if I want to laugh every now and then because Same. it's it's fucking hilarious. It's like this guy really he he did an interview one time and he's like he's serious. He feels like he he can sing. He feels like that. Like I really can sing and I don't know what everyone is laughing about because I can sing and this sounds good to me. And I'm like, well, that's good for you, man. That's really good. For you. <laughs> I mean, like I feel do bad for think... Hayden, but like, no, no, you can't, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. Sometimes I go on like Catatonic Youths, that YouTube page or the Facebook page, and just look at like all the failed version, you know, music videos that they put out by like these obscure bands from the middle of Nebraska that like tried to make like a new metal band twelve years ago, and it doesn't not aged well because it was very derivative. It, Catatonic or, like, Youths like all the crunk core stuff. Yeah. Oh, oh boy. You remember that Broken Side, thing, huh? Chris? <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Can you imagine like? Like you're that you're broken side for the rest of your career now. Like <laughs> that's crazy, man. Like can you imagine like you did this like thing that was a gimmick that only worked during a certain time period. You know, when a few things came together correctly in like two thousand eight or nine or whatever or ten. And like you'll never make any sense outside of that like three year time period. And that's your career? That sucks. I don't know. Shout don't, out side projects. Be I, I don't. You'll always be known as Broken Side Guy. Like you gotta watch out. You gotta watch out what you put yourself behind. You Shoji might make some money right away. So 100 Gex could run. You're not wrong. <laughs> That's shout funny. out Shoji, by the way. What's yeah, up, shout Blue? out Shoji. Love That's Harold. That's another Philly guy. MVP. He's yeah. Technically, I think New Jersey, but I consider him adopted into Philadelphia. He does a lot of That's really cool Virgil shows up in guy. New York, though. He has a lot of really cool shows up in New York, so always, if you see those, go to them because they're very fun, and Shoji is just super fun in general, you know what I mean? Super fun and talented. And a wonderful DJ, too. Really great. Hell yeah. yeah. He's, Hell yeah. He's done Terminally Chill multiple I wanna say, times. I listened to he's a DJ, Shoji set DJ not long, long ago, time. and uh, was very, very enjoyable. Like, guy knows what he's doing. Yeah, he's phenomenal. Um, he's phenomenal. So much energy. Uh, yeah. I prefer to Shoji as a firecracker. Uh, but anyway, um, any more questions? Because we're starting to get into like the I last have, half I hour I have a now. question. First, yeah, get, uh, guest, uh, guests run up the questions. Uh, chat, blow it up for us. Um, we talked about objectively bad music. Does it exist? I don't know. Is there objectively good music? Like nobody should criticize this. This is good. Like, you know what yeah. I mean? What do you think? Is that what you're asking? Do you believe in objectively Me? good art, no. Mark? And if yeah. so, can you think of some examples? I think there is like objectively, like it, all, all across the board, like everybody can like, oh yeah, this is the best thing ever. Or, or yeah, we agree that this is good because I've, I'll always find people who are still going to be like, I'm not really True. into it. I really don't get it. I, you know, and that's fine. You know, um, yeah, I, I even the, 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 my favorite things there's, there's always somebody that's like, yo, Mark, I don't know why you like this, you know, and, and it's cool, you know, whatever, you know, to each his own, that mm -hmm. old saying, you know, but yeah, mm -hmm. I don't think anything is objective when it comes to art. Indie it's Advent says yeah. New Jabees. New Jabees. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I can field that question too. And I would yeah. say that absolutely there is no right or wrong answer for art and that you know you'll find Agreed. somebody who doesn't like what you like and that is what it is i do however believe there sometimes are like critic there sometimes is critic proof art that doesn't necessarily mean mm. it's objectively good or objectively bad but there are some like art that's like critic proof that like no critic ever gives a bad review to like loveless for example yeah i'm pretty sure that album is critic proof yeah and there's not a single like you know, uh, I've tried music critic in the world. Almost got canceled. Well, you, 
<laughs> I'm just kidding. I love well, Loveless. That's really <laughs> funny. Um, yeah, I think that you'll never see a music critic say something bad about Loveless. I think they'd almost be feared they'd lose their job if they did. Right. But you might find somebody who doesn't ever listen to shoegaze and has no familiarity with it and has no and isn't their thing. Maybe they listen to fucking like they probably they may listen to like Tim McGraw or something, and you want to put like Loveless on for them. They're gonna be like, "What the fuck is this vacuum cleaner sounds you right. keep playing for me?" Oh, your washing machine <laughs> and, album, cool. Well, your washing machine making album would be like a dubstep album, but like I would say, the vacuum cleaner making an album would be <laughs> like a Shoegaze album. No, I I'm into it, man. I'm into the washing machine <laughs> smashing around, making fucking robot frog noises. I like robot it's, frog it's, noises. I, I mean, if you had told me like 15 years ago that like one day there'd be like a bunch of pretty half naked girls dancing around to like robot frog noises, you know, at a festival, I'd be like, no way. But now here we are, and I'll never doubt anything ever again after that. <laughs> I'll, I'll never. There's every every future is possible. Let me tell you right now. Um, any other questions? Because we are starting to run short. Oh yeah, time. Shoji we says, when's the next episode? Vincent Remember show in Philly? Oh, okay. Yeah. You want to do one? And then I come, come co-DJ at Terminally Chill. I throw a big dance party here in Philadelphia these days. It's very fun. Shoji's co-DJed it many times. You can just check it out on Instagram. You should come uh, co-DJ. Guest DJ. Yeah, yeah, man. I, I definitely come. come. I mean, I, of course, I've done, you know, with Virtual 94, I've done a few. I know you have. I, I actually played there. at that show, too. Very cool. Um, but yeah. you should definitely come to Terminally Chill. Also, that's actually, we do that at the Barbary, and I think the next one is uh, in the Dolphin in, in uh, South Philly. We do that in the club, and oh, uh, we oh, yeah. have a whole big following for it. And Virtua 94 is there, too. They set up the chill station there, which has, like, video games and shit. And, yeah, they're involved in it, too. Um, but, yeah, oh, Terminally yeah. Chill, ch check out the Instagram for that. Man, those parties, my parties go off, my friend. Yeah, uh, yeah. Let me know. I'm definitely down to, to do it. Yeah. Uh, guest DJ set, man. What what kind of decks do you use? Uh, I've been. I have this this small control, this new Mark controller. But I'm thinking about That's getting something a little uses. bit more. He's a wizard yeah. decks. Yeah, I, and I mean, I'm not really like a, a scratcher, dude. I'm really, I'm really like no. Playing. We don't want that anyway. It's yeah. about you know, a dance party at the end of the day is about the audience. And I said this at the top of the show. Like dance yeah. parties are about the audience. This isn't necessarily a performance. This is a dance party. I do this party every other month in Philadelphia, yeah. and uh, you know, so and like a lot of people have co-DJ. Isaac, so I have another. Isaac's done the one that uh, in. Uh, so there's two of them actually. I have the one in Philadelphia, and then. My buddy Fantacat, shout, shout out Agnes. Out she, Agnes. she manages Party Terminally starter. Chill NorCal over in um, Sacramento now, California. And that guy right there, Isaac, has co DJed that one before. And uh, yeah, yeah Shoji's been, been at the Philadelphia one. We've also we've had Pat Jennington at it before. Um, you know, uh, James from Death Dynamic Shroud, Swagness. all kinds of people have co DJed it. So good times guess, yeah. yeah man you gotta jump it's on there, party but the this isn't this isn't the shout out time right now i don't want to get into too well, much well shoji just asked me how far the drive was it was eight hours and 15 minutes it was worth every Jesus Christ. Every, and central california you guys on the west coast, if you've never been to you guys fresno on the west or Modesto, coast, man, you guys it's so drive. fucking boring dude like tehachapi is beautiful the rest of central california sucks you, got, you guys on the West Coast are on a whole other tip oh, about dude. your tolerance for driving. I don't know. Like, how, I can't even. You guys are like, it. yeah, I drove two hours. Oh, and I'm in Jersey. And I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> kind of. Like, I'm like two hours. Yeah, I don't know how you. Drive. Like, oh, I'm going to have to go rent need... my little private plane up for that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to. <laughs> I don't know how you guys do these like five hour drives. Like, oh, it's yeah, nothing. It's, it fucking it's crazy. Sucks. Like, that's how far I had to drive to Mesa. Jesus um, Christ. Question for you, Mark. How important do you think. Things like blogs, curators, and tastemakers are for curating, uh, like Spotify, YouTube playlists. Since you said you use YouTube, how important is that to like tastemakers? What the fuck is a tastemaker? Like that's always <laughs> been my, like it's like an influencer know, right? that has that has good taste. Tastemakers, I don't know, man. Who likes? Fuck, I don't people? know, dude. Like, I, I think I'm a taste. Actually, I, I was talking to Hot Wax. I, I don't know if you guys know Hot maker, Wax, but like, there's a job you can wax. get yeah. where that... you like you pick songs for like Starbucks. You're and I was like, oh Adam, my right? fucking god, I want that. Yes, Adam. I was like, I want yeah. that job so bad. 
Um, that will be a cool job. But there's this fucking website called uh, uh, Submit Hub where they have these. Uh, I'm familiar with Submit Hub? Yeah. The, the, I, I think every person who's a producer is familiar with Submit Hub. I've sent things to Submit Hub, and it's just like I'm like, who the fuck am I sending this to? Like, right. You know what I mean? I've been tossing your pearls before swine. <laughs> no, I've actually done it before. I've actually used Submit Hub before and then like had like the people and I didn't realize I was like friends with them on Twitter or Facebook or Instagram and they've reached out to me like Raw oh, Ryan what? reached out to me. Like, Raw Ryan works like, for Submit Hub? What? He's got I I didn't even he's just like, yeah, you could just like message me. You would you didn't have to spend Hey, I, I heard uh Skelly <laughs> Smoochums in the Chipotle. Oh, uh what? No, that's that's a that's joke. not real. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> All right. You were my song Skelly Smoochums in Chipotle. Yeah, that did not happen. That didn't happen. No. But like, yeah. On the real though, like, 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 do you do you think like blogs are like? They they have the nerve to decline you. Like, do you think Uh, curators matter, or should people just be using algorithms? I I think when it comes to like the Spotify playlist and shit like that, I I think there are like valid folks that like really curate very good playlists, especially like that that one vaporwave playlist on on spotify like the official one and also the other mm-hmm. like offshoots of that the it's very, playlist the young too. Yeah, it's, it's very well curated it, as far as like yeah, blogs and shit like that i don't i don't even like are blogs still a thing nowadays like nope. no man not really i mean it's a shame sure but are. i remember back in the day when they were and you could just yeah. you just email them and You'd email like twenty or twenty five, and like, like hope maybe like a few got Anthony back. Anthony Fantano's was, picks, and like nobody even reads pitch. But it was always cool to have blogs back then because then you got like you got like some copy too because someone might write something nice about you, and it was True. cool to have that. Co- I st- I still have all my copy saved from the early Good. days of the vapor, the two thousand ten to two thousand like thirteen days back when blogs were a little bit more popular. Like I I saved all I copied and pasted every every time they would write something about me and saved it in my little uh, EPK thing, Sonic bids. EPK. <laughs> Sonic bids. Back in the day, right? Yeah. I know, right? I still have that active because it's the I only place where I still have EPK. like all my press. Good times. Yeah. So Dojo underscore R4 has a great question. They want to know, how do you find a good sample? What do you listen for? Um, It has to move me in a way, and it doesn't have to be a, a specific thing. It just has to move me in a way where like i'm thinking of a, a a song that just moves in a way um space space talk by uh how do you pronounce her name um damn how do you pronounce her name hold on one second here i'm sorry i'm doing i know we, we're, we're sure you're good time. no we're no, not fine we're fine uh, uh we could talk about shoegaze for like three hours but i'm not gonna do that to you Asha Puth Puth Oh my god, Lux. Amazing. (laughs) You already got it? She found it. Okay. Jesus Christ. That is a record that like when you hear it, like it takes you through these like cosmic fucking chord changes and that's like a like I look I I wanna hear shit like that when I go sample stuff where it's just like it's taking me through these realms of like, oh shit. Kind of like a, a house of mirrors or something, so that's what I really look for when I go to, you know, go sample stuff or, you know, it, it has to, it just has to have a movement to it where it's like, oh, I can really like get lost in trance with yeah. this, you know? Something memorable, something dynamic. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I like that. Good answer. <laughs> NCXKD says, what's the sample on Bathroom Vibes? Are you okay with disclosing that? Uh, bathroom Vibes is not a sample. Bath- bathroom yeah, Vibes I- is not a sample, folks. It's not. No, a, you heard it here. It, you it, heard it well, on hot takes. It is. So there's a uh, a track on Interstellar Love that is not a sample as well. That the artist that I was working with named Brianna the One was like, "Yeah, I really like that. Could I like write a song to it?" And like she recorded in in my bathroom in my old fucking apartment, and we named it Bathroom wow. Vibes. And oh I'm wow. Like, like yo, we gonna put this on. Oh, that's Bob, honestly man. cool as fuck. Oh wow, yeah, that's I, I, I so love that fun. story. I love that. I was about to say the same thing. Yeah, Syllabus was... says, "Sorry if it's been asked already. What are some albums, songs, or artists that are extremely important to you? Like life changing important." Um, 
I, Radiohead was like life changing and important yes. to me. Yes, yes, sir. Me too. Wow. Thank wow. you. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah, because it mm-hmm. was, um, and Rainbows came out around the time that I like graduated high school and like I don't I'm like what the fuck am I gonna do with my life and it very just cool. was like the soundtrack for that time it was like very depressing and like you know that album was just the backdrop for like my depression at the time wow <laughs> you know but yeah that changed my life I was like oh snap I want to hear more music like this <laughs> <laughs> is that your Love favorite it. Radiohead album uh favorite I don't I think okay no matter of fact Kid A is my favorite I don't know Kid A Amnesiac is probably like my favorite like if you have to put them together I don't know I, I, do I have a favorite maybe maybe okay computer I don't know that it's a hard one right mine is always yeah. Mailbag Thief <laughs> which is an unpopular yeah, and, choice wow. but I mean listen I know say? that I feel like Kid A was monumental but Hell of the Thief just has some singles that are to die for yeah, yeah, the, especially the, the the first half of the album where it's two plus two equals five, and then it goes into sit down and stand up, and then yeah. sail to the moon. And it's, yeah, that that's definitely like a, a banger album. Like, I love Hell to the Thief. Yeah. <laughs> In real said mid A. Mid A. <laughs> mid A. Yeah. A real is A real has never heard of Radiohead, right? No. <laughs> yeah, that's right. He's missing out. <laughs> Anything else besides Radiohead? Because that was really, really personally very monumental to me too. Hmm. What, uh, what? How old were you when you first heard Radiohead, or like when you first got into it? I mean, Radiohead has always been there, especially like the fucking Paranoid Android video. I was, True. you know, that would pop up on MTV oh, too yeah. every now. And I'm like, okay, that's cool. But I, I didn't really start getting into Radiohead until I was like, you know, uh, like 19, I got where you. it made sense for me. Mm. <laughs> it was like and a freshman year you, thing yeah. for me. Yeah. Very cool. Um, Something that changed my life. Uh, I don't know. I mean, and then the fucking slow dive Slovakia like that. Hell yeah. yeah. How yeah, do you, I, I don't know. And, how do you feel about uh, their, their third album? The one that uh, got them kicked off of what was it, Creation or Island Records or some shit? Yeah. Uh, how do you pr- pronounce it? Pygmalion? Or, Pygmalion. Or, how do you yeah. feel about Pygmalion? Yeah. Do you like it or not really? I I'm, I wasn't a big fan of their, like, uh, ex, you know, their, their ambient experimental stuff like that. I mean, it's okay, but it's it's not it's not what Slovaki was for me because I, I, I kind of feel like when I go through these transitions in my life where – it's like I don't know what the fuck is coming next. Like I, I lost my mother last year, and Ooh. that's rough, man. I remember you posting that. that uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And in in that like whole time period where it was just like I just wanted to escape, and and it just represents this sort of escapism for me, you know. And and those are like monumental points in my life where I just want to just I just don't want to be here in a sense not like i yeah. don't want to be here in life i just don't want to connect with anything on this mm. realm at this at the time and, and music does that for, does that for me sometimes uh, oh yeah escapism is wow. i mean it's something that we all use you know and the music is is i feel like the healthiest form you know we all yeah. obviously we all have to you know sit with our emotions and process them but music certainly yeah. helps either um i guess like when you guys are sad, do you listen to sad music or do you listen to happy music? Listen to sad music, like like once again Slovaki. Yeah. The, the, I feel like the I want to sit with that. I want to kind of ruminate yeah. in that. Yeah, like the the record single in Slovaki is like that's that's what I go because it's not it's it's like a a a transcendental sadness where it's just like you're not really sad it's just like you just want to express yourself that's what that song feels like for me it's just like i just want to sing you know i just want to feel this thing like i i don't know what it is but you know i don't know <laughs> i feel that man yeah yeah beautiful sadness yes <laughs> i've always resonated like sad music any kind of bad vibes honestly like like if i had to rank all the vibes like sad music angry music just resonates with me for whatever reason more than just happy music. I like some happy music. I just 
I don't know, bad vibe music seems to resonate more with me for some reason. I don't know why. And when I'm angry, you know, I'll play Dark Thrones, uh, Transylvania Dark Hunger. <laughs> you play what? I'll, I'll play some Dark Throne. I'll play Transylvanian Hunger. Okay. <laughs> Very cool. I feel like... A... <laughs> but no, mm -hmm. I stopped listening to black metal years ago. Oh, that's so cool. Got... Yeah, it got kind of racist. I'm like, oh, no, I can't. Yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. There's some serious problems with, with that. Some like there's some like black metal shoegaze like hybrid bands these days that are pretty yeah. interesting. It has like that black metal sound, the but French with like bands. shoegaze vibes as well. Yeah, and like it's like a whole other scene, and that stuff's kind of cool if you ever want to revisit it. Um, yeah. we're running out of time though. Do we want to start doing some shout outs, Isaac? Yeah, I mean, if you guys are ready, well, one of the things we like to do, Mark, at the end of every episode is just give our guests the floor. You can promote anything you want. Uh, you can shout out anything you want. I did have one question. I wanted to ask you about Godpire Films. Oh, yeah. So if God we could get a plug-in for that, maybe before we do our shout-outs, what is Godpire Films? What's this? Um, during the pandemic, I bought a cinema camera, and I was like, yeah, I kind of oh. want to get into that. So, you know, if, you know, at first, first it's like okay what am i going to do with this am i going to like shoot m music videos or am i going to like create like storylines or whatever so i'm just in the process of like really putting together something that really expresses that you know visual aspect of you know my creativity and you know i, I guess Very i'm just cool. getting my chops in with you know doing videos and shit like that so and and definitely look forward to you know god pirate films creating like short stories and things like that because i feel like i i want to just tell stories through that and have this whole visual thing going on with that mm -hmm. very cool. cool i had to ask i noticed you've been representing a lot lately uh it wouldn't yeah. be a complete episode without asking about something that you're obviously very passionate about right now but indeed indeed with that being said man you can say whatever you want shout out whoever you want or promote or drop some more hot takes whatever you want Oh yeah, man. Well, shout out to the the, the whole Philadelphia vaporwave community. I, I feel like it is a hotbed up there, dude. Yeah, <laughs> you're in the place. And we, yeah, and, and shout out to folks like like James uh, of DDS. We oh, men yeah. we mentioned him earlier. It's yeah. it's interesting how like folks you know kind of like have these connections because James is a uh, professor is also you know at some point was my professor uh starkey he's you know one of the 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 pioneers of the grime dub scene the oh, dub wow. step scene unreal yeah, and, and that that's always cool and and you know we're all connected in some way and 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 that's really cool uh sh shout out to my partner in camp candle Hatepsa. you know shout definitely be looking forward to uh some some new camp candle stuff shout out to the, the cool. artists i'm working with Brianna Castro, shout out to my family, my kids, my my lovely lady Lux. <laughs> mm -hmm. we got to, we got two people with ladies named Lux. I love it. <laughs> um, yeah, shout out to y'all, man, for having me on tonight. You know, oh, of course, definitely. Man. Uh, of course. I mean, I've been, yeah, I've been, I'm, just like Chris says, like you know, I don't know about the rest of y'all. I usually meet people via Facebook or Instagram, sometimes Twitter, but not as much. But man, I think we've been Facebook friends for a fat minute. And I was like, when am I going to get Mark on the show? You know, like, it's yeah, got to happen yeah. sooner rather than later. Thank you for accepting. You know? Yeah, most definitely. Most definitely. See, and I made time for this tonight because... That Glass means a lot. Glassjaw came to town tonight. It's <laughs> a lot. Who came to town? Oh, Glass Glassjaw? Glassjaw. Oh, oh Mark, oh, that shit. means so much, man. I mean, yeah, your, your so lived much. experience and, like, your perspective is just something that we really, really wanted to have. Uh, yeah. So I'm sorry that you missed out on Glass Chaw, dude, but thank you. No, uh, it's all good, man. I, I would rather much do this with you guys. Do you want to plug go. your Camp Candle I mean, if it was If it was Glass... Is listen, there a link if it to was like 2005, films? I would not... Uh, <laughs> it was 2005, I'd be like, you go to the Glass Chaw concert right now. Right. <laughs> it's okay. They'll be back again. You know, it's, it's fine. Um, yeah, it's Dojo good. underscore R4 does want to know if, if we should watch your band camp page for new stuff. Uh, Lux, thank you for the uh, the link to Camp Candle. Thank you, Lux. Thank you. Uh, yeah, keep watching. Keep watching the, the the Vince Remember for new stuff. I'm I'm I think I'm at a at a place where those records that I was speaking about, I'm actually gonna just finish them 
and get them mixed and mastered because they yeah. are something that very I cool. want to get mixed and mastered. I mean, the vaporwave you know? scene is is very very alive. It's it's. And, and the know, cool part so is, is a lot of ever, these, almost. yeah, a lot of these kids haven't shown up until so recently, but they still love the old sounds. They still, you know, they appreciate the old and the new, and and so they do love we. seeing the older artists come yeah. back and do. We again. we love I mean, the support really of old heads, and and we love yeah. watching where it's going too. Yeah, yeah. So I, I I would love to be a part of you know what the 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 new the new folks are doing with this and and just bringing you know a vibe that you know might be new for them as well right. so it's it's gonna be yeah, fun man. you know i love that Absolutely. well nobody comes on hot takes just once except for tech honors but he's the only one <laughs> hey look you know if y'all have me back that's all good we can have another conversation oh, yeah. about cool stuff so <laughs> that's cool with me <laughs> nice well chris you probably all have right. a lot more to shout out than i do go for it not too much um so my side project polymath vampire the melodic ambient album is uh, called uh, Make Me Feel Alive. It's coming out on Business Casual uh, next month on the 15th. Yes. It features myself doing all kinds of fun analog synthesizers and 80s digital synthesizer work, along with uh, collaborations with Winter Quilt and Golden Living Room and Donor Lens and Tower of the Sun and uh, Hawaii 94. And so oh, that would yeah. be out on Dizzy's Casual. There is a single out right now. You can check that out. Uh, there will be the another Winter single one, out right? at the end. Of the Winter Quilt out song. Yeah, he did some outstanding MIDI guitar work on that. And then the second single with Golden Living Room will be out probably at the end of the month. And, of course, you can purchase my album, Glows Then Melts, on Needle Juice Records on vinyl in Glow in the Dark vinyl or Blood Splatter vinyl. Two variants. Purchase that. Needle Juice always has records in stock, so go for it. And aside from that, um, trying to get like an EP out because okay. um, there's a big, li a big live show. Well, I like to get at least an EP out. There's a big live show coming up in June 10th in Boston at the Middle East Club, famed Middle East Club, that I'll be playing that oh, show. Oh, yeah, along. I saw that lineup, dog. So, Woo! so Ju June 10th, I'll be playing a show, a skeleton lipstick show, along with Pat Chennington, Fiber, Melonade, Mir no Til and Mir no Tilde. Damn, that's so, a fat lineup out in Boston too. Woo! Yes. Next terminally chill. Gonna I have to see how far of a drive uh, that May is. 5th, by the way. May 5th. Okay, that's at uh, the Dolphin, right? Not the Barbary. The Dolphin, because the Barbary is being refurbished. So right it's now. not so a permanent move. South Philly. No, it's just okay. um, just until they refurbish everything. They're like opening up the upstairs again and everything. Very okay, cool. That's enough for me. Uh, so um, I don't have anything coming up, but I did just play a show. I got to open for Vape Error and Groovy Kaiju out in Mesa, Arizona Ooh. for Future Club 3. We shared a stage with a cyberpunk group uh, called Desert Runners, and we shared a stage with a goth group called Six Feet Under. And uh, attendance uh -huh. was was pretty solid. We pulled about 350 people between the three of us. Wow! I hey. would say the vaporwave in stage in Arizona. Well, you know the vaporwave stage. Of course, vaporwave is wow. a hard sell. Let's be honest. I mean, everybody knows goth. You know that's an easy sell. But you know we got. It was cool how many like scary looking goth people were coming and fucking vibing out to our music. <laughs> I did a, a back to back yeah. with uh, Feats, the Wombat, Lo-Fi House. Uh, played some uh, some JD Sinuti, some. Um, uh, no format, that sort of thing. Um, good times. Um, so that went really well. Uh, shout out Chief Elif and the VA10 Association for Future Club 3. I've already talked to him about the next one that's in the works. No details, but it's looking like it's going to be really good. Uh, the uh, uh, Vapor Shave event that you and I both participated in just finished yes. a couple days ago. Um, I had a, a half hour cloud rap and sad voice set that I did. A lot of Bones, Xavier Wolf, Young Lean type of stuff. Uh, I cannot put it on YouTube because it's copyright claimed already. Uh, so we're going to see yeah. if Instagram is going to allow me to post. Uh, I'm not going to trim out Yoshi City. It's just not happening. Um, but it's on SoundCloud. So, you know, if you guys like cloud rap or sad boy stuff. Um, Chris, thanks for tuning in. I'm sorry that I didn't tune in for your set. I was hanging out with some friends, uh, no, you know, man, which I don't do very often. Weekend, I'll I catch up. That. Yeah, you know, Lux had a set too, which she premiered, obviously, um, you know, yesterday. Uh, Glam Gems. Uh, three and it was fucking solid. You guys gotta check that out. Um, Definitely lots check of that fun. Out. It's not often that Lux does like DJ sets of sorts, but but she's good at it. Uh, and of course, uh, Wave Break. I did a ten minute break course set for uh, really just a few tracks. I lost my mind on camera uh, for ten minutes. 
and that's up on SoundCloud and YouTube as well, and coming into Instagram soon. Um, coming up in the future, since she said it was allowed to be announced, the Latin All Stars oh. Fest coming up here pretty soon hasn't been announced yet, but I mixed 30 minutes worth of my partner Luxury Leads music for her as a special uh, gift for nice. her. Um, mostly tracks from Noir, um, but lots of good stuff, and I feel like I did a really good job. I ran it by her, I think, three different drafts, and there's a 30 minute set coming up here pretty soon, don't know when yet of Luxury Elite as mixed by Young Shiro, uh, which I'm pretty excited about. Um, Ew. Other than that, uh, I am moving soon, so we will not have a Hot Takes episode in two weeks. It will be in three weeks, I think is what we agreed on. Uh, April yeah. 11, we're bringing, unless an act of God happens, we're bringing the Virtua 94 crew to Hot Takes. Yes. Um, yeah, want to get those guys on. Probably Mr. Hideyoshi and Todovsky, maybe Shoji, if you're still in chat, maybe Paranormal, uh, uh, um, depending right. upon how chaotic it could possibly be. Virtua94 joins us in three weeks, same time, same place, twitch.tv slash hot takes vapor. Um, last thing, uh, no names, but we gave the agreement for a serious heavyweight to get on the show with us pretty soon. Uh, can't wait to announce that coming up in the future. Uh, we're going to have a very exclusive interview uh, coming up here in the, uh, the, for the foreseeable future. But that wraps it up for tonight. I want to thank you, Mark, for giving us your evening. I'm sorry you didn't get to see Glassjaw. Thank you. It was so no, fun talking okay, to you, man. man. And and I just want to I want like a, to geek out with you more in the future going forward. Um, Most absolutely. Definitely. Thank you to my co-host Skeleton Lipstick for always being there and being a supporter and, and doing this with me. Uh, thank Absolutely. you for all of you regulars, Luxury Elite, Soft Replica, Pacific Plaza, Zodicus Karamazov, Syllabus. Thank you guys for coming through and making the show what it is. Guys, don't forget, share it with your friends. Retweet us, repost us, uh, invite people, help us promote, help and, us grow the fandom. Yeah. And of course, all the episodes are up on YouTube, Spotify, podcasts, mm -hmm. all the different. Yeah, Mark, this episode will be up on all podcasting services yeah, in the next couple all days. All the ways you can watch it. In the shout next out Indie right. Advent and DS Dude and oh, Luxury Elite for being so out. helpful. Yes, absolutely. So helpful. Out, please. And uh, same sure. time, Indeed. same place. Yeah. Three weeks, twitch.tv yep. slash hot takes vapor, 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on April 11 for Virtua 94. Good night. Good night.